Well, I call to order the Open Source Voting System Technical Advisory Committee meeting of the San Francisco Elections Commission. Today is Thursday, December 6th, 2018, and the time is now 6.03 p.m. I'm the Chair, Chris Trudonik. Secretary Chan, can you take the roll? Chair, Chris Trudonik. Here. Trudonik uh -huh. here. Uh, member Carl Haig. Here. Haig here. Uh, member Ron Catal is not present. Member Brandon Phillips called in and uh, had an excused absent. Uh, member Tony Wasserman. Here. Uh, Wasserman present. You have a quorum. Okay, great. And just to uh, reiterate, I haven't heard from Member Catal, but Member Phillips does have an excused absence. It's conceivable that Member Catal is standing in front of 421. Well, it's on our website. I mean, I know. it's possible, yeah. It's I possible. know. I mean, I, I, okay. I had to I got you. adjust. Okay, well, I'm sure what we can ask when he gets here. Gets him on. Okay, um, um, item number two. Item number two, general public comment. Public comment on any issue within the committee's general jurisdiction that is not covered by another item on this agenda. Okay, seeing no members of the public, next item. Item three, approval of minutes of previous meeting. Discussion of possible action to approve minutes for the November 8, 2018 committee meeting. Okay. Um, All right. Hey, sorry, I almost said wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> I had that right. No, that's wrong. I did too, oh, but I had to go scared. Okay, for the record, it's uh, 6.05 p.m. and we just started item number three. Member Katab has arrived. Okay, um, you know, as usual, I've, I've reviewed this and um, I made some edits. Excellent job, Secretary Chan. Thank you for corrections. Sure, um, there weren't many, but um, Well, I don't, think it, I don't think that it 
that it adds anything to the overall? Um, well, I think the first sentence is important because it, you're, you're reiterating. But it's, it's, it's kind of tangled syntactically. Repeated that he thought that D, D, T should uh, keep the committee's recommendations in mind to ensure security or something, or to or, or to keep in mind the <coughs> the use of the, the possible use of containers or something. It's just tangled. Oh yeah, that is tangled. I I misinterpreted it when I first read it. Yeah. I believe there were two. So I moved I moved that we strike the yeah, paragraph. Yeah. They, they don't follow that. I mean you have the unenviable job of like trying to make something make sense. So. <laughs> oh yeah. He might have said it in a different paragraph too, and I just put it uh, in. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. But yeah. I understand, I remember what the, the, the I, I try was. not to be difficult to parse, but <laughs> every now and then. Related to when you said you had a concern that all the things that the committee was doing, that DT, there was a, there was a need to have DT keep it in mind. Somehow the yeah. committee needed to keep it in DT. Oh, so, so the context maybe was Your the continuing dialogue with, yeah. with DT yeah. that, that you had raised. Uh, That's an important point. I don't think we should strike it. You know, but, so, so, but, but it, I would be okay if we said something uh, along the lines of, of Member Wasserman. Uh, re again, recommended that uh, the committee's recommendations be, or well, that that we keep open lines of communication with DT to ensure that the committee's recommendations are followed. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then the second sentence can go away. Okay. 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 I'm 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 through it. I'm impressed with some of the things that I apparently said. Uh, I know that I feel that, that things, it just feels like a much longer than four weeks ago. Was the Might be all the things I promised to do that I should get to. Um, no, I, I, have some, I, I promised to do them by January. So the fact that I have not done most of them is not a problem for me yet. <laughs> okay, so anything else? Um, I didn't know. What, is that, you said no? No, I, I don't have anything. Okay. Uh, I mentioned something earlier and now I'm trying to remember what it is. About the CLA? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. The, I did like just finish the right. CLA. Right. Kind of grand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do we have a motion to, I don't remember. Oh, for the okay. minutes? No, we just finished. We okay. just finished. I think, I think so, there's no other issues. Yeah, so I will move that we um, adopt the minutes with the change that I mentioned about the CLA and the change that Tony mentioned about the things that he spoke to in my mind. Section, yes, second paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll second that. Okay. So seeing no members of the public, there's no public comments. Um, any further discussion before we take a vote? Seeing none, Secretary Chan. On the minutes of November 8th, uh, Member Janai. Yes. Janai, yes. Member Hay. Yes. Yes, Member Patel. Yes. Patel, yes. Member Washington. Yep. Yes. yes. The uh, four vote for Texas. Okay, next item. Uh, item four, administration. Discussion of possible action regarding administrative issues, including but not limited to attendance at the election commission meeting by committee members, the committee's website, and the committee's written report for the commission. Okay, so let's. So, first. Um, there was no commission meeting on November 21st. It was canceled. That's right. Uh, I signed up to attend it, but looked up. I, I looked out of no one. I cannot go to the next one. It's December 19th? Correct. Yeah, I'm in China. Boom. I'm in Europe. Okay. Um, well, how about if um, 
And I assume you don't want to drive up for that. Yeah. Okay. No. How about if I'll, I'll, um, I'll see if Brandon can do it, and if he can't, then I'll do it, because okay. that will be giving him a chance to introduce himself. Yeah. Just a session. Okay. And then, um, as far as our, our regular meeting time for the next year, what was our schedule? Your schedule is still on the second Thursday of the month. Thursday. So okay. that would be January the 10th. January, which is the next one? January 10th. Uh, may I have an excuse? <laughs> You'll be somewhere else. No, 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 I'm actually here. Uh, but I think I have tickets for a basketball game that night. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But I have, I have tickets for basketball game one night and for um, Sean's team, SHM, Peter, and the following night. I don't remember which one is which, but. So do people, um, so who, you can't, you can't make it then? I can't make it on the 10th, no. I'm going to, I, I'm going to the Consumer Electronics Show the 8th and the 9th. Right. Wow. That'll be, that'll be nice. nice. How about Carl, and you, can you make that the 10th? Uh, January, uh, probably. And then Rowan? Yeah, I'm good for it. Okay, so, so do we want to reschedule so that Tony can make it? Um, oh wait, look at this. No, hang on. I'm good. Oh, you're good. So, so the, the two things have to go to the 11th and the 12th, not the 10th and the 11th. Agreed. Okay. Alright, so I'm good on the 10th, and I will have a full report on the zaniness of the consumer electronics. Great. <laughs> okay, um, do we have our usual room for that? Uh, yeah. Oh, because this is a, an off time, so that's right. Right, right. So, sorry, sorry for the confusion. We're good to go. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, and then, so who's going to be, okay, we've got the next commission meeting on yeah. 16th, 20th, so, the full commission on the 16th, yes. So one item, I guess this falls under administration, my commission term is up on January 1st, but I'm allowed to hold over for 60 days, and I'm going to be, um, I'm allowed to seek reappointment too, so so I mean I should be here at least for the next two months, and hopefully much longer. Hopefully the next five years. Yeah. Is um, it a five-year term? Yes. Oh wow. So. You paid it for five years now. Four and a half. Yeah. I wasn't. I started halfway through the first year. Um, yeah. Who knows if this committee will be here in five years? <laughs> who knows if any of us will be here in five years? <laughs> Apart from the committee. Um, also, this this is on our administration too. Secretary Chan, um, do you want to say anything? Or? Um, I gave notice to the commission that I had to leave my position. Um, and originally, I told them by the end of this month, because of things that are coming up next year, next year that would interfere with my ability to continue to give you service on a consistent basis. So, um, talking up with President Donaldson after yesterday's meeting with the BOPEC, he encouraged me to stay on to at least the end of January for assistance in the transition because it's going to take a little while to get a replacement. The elections are coming up in January, so uh, my schedule is, at this point is open enough that I can do that if nothing else comes up. So I, I agreed to, to do that. So I'll be here you to your like, next meeting. Yeah, so I've really enjoyed yeah. you being the secretary. It's been great. And you're real sad to see you go. Well, I'm really happy that you were here to mentor me and, and show me how to deal with the website because otherwise oh. it, it would be down. <laughs> yeah. So well, let's give secretary <laughs> a I appreciate your hard work. I mean, it's really hard work, I know. Well, you're, you're the, probably doing more work than all of us. So. <laughs> in, in translations, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you at liberty to speak about your next adventure? I don't have a next adventure. I'm, I'm leaving for various factors. One is health because my oh. really hip has been acting up a lot. So all of the travel back and forth, up and down and stuff, and moving around is just too much, I think, wear. You know, almost mm -hmm. bone on bone, totally. And right. Like a little bit of garbage there, but mm -hmm. I don't think all this extra movement helps. So I'm going to like lay back on that and hopefully, you know, let it calm down. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have other things that I have to tend to that take me out of town. I just don't know when they may happen. That's why I don't think I can be consistent with this this, this body. Unfortunately. So but we will see you next month though. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. okay. All right. So then um, so another thing is that our 
our triannual report is due, the actually it's in January and um, January fifth. Yeah, I'm just looking. It's the first week of January, so we have this problem. We have the same problem we had last time, but we didn't run right time. Yeah, so we don't we don't even get to do a draft. Um, so what did we do last time? Last time I wrote it. I wrote a draft. Um, oh, yeah. I went back and forth with you. I don't know what I know. And then, did, but did we go over anything with the group before? Yeah, I think we. I, yeah, I think we hashed out which things we wanted to be in it. Uh, the group told me that, and then I went and did it. And then another option would be to kind of fudge it a little bit and you know, maybe um, approve one on the tenth. Yeah, like because what's the is it the fifth day of the month or is it like the first Monday? Well, I think it's probably. Um, or is it like the fifth day because that's what we did once? Or well, the sequence was the fifth, the fifth, the eighth, and then the sixth. So I don't know if it's like a hard and fast like okay. four months exactly, but um, so you know, we could we could potentially assign someone to draft something that we then vote on the tenth. Yes, we could do that. Let me um, let me just look at our bylaws. Okay, so it says the tax shall provide the commission with at least three written reports per year, at least one in every four month period. So, okay, I guess, I guess that would mean, well, what is the four month period? I mean, if you define that as like the first, second, third, four months of the year, then I think that we put off that obligation to last in 2018. And that we could theoretically delay this report all the way to April if we wanted to, which we shouldn't do. But yeah, yeah, it sounds well, like a ten. Should we? Okay. Should, do people are people okay with just having a draft ready for the next meeting? Oh yeah, absolutely. So you know, one of the questions I think Ron raised it is, you know, what are the things that we want to call out? Because you know, you can't. You want to write a report that has a small number of takeaways mm -hmm. that. You know, here are the significant events that yeah. happened, and maybe the meeting with Director Jarrell is one of them. Uh, the uh, Brandon Brandon joining the, the uh, efforts to uh, build the uh, software that, that uh, Carl led on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we get those three down, uh, we will have hit. I think. Uh, the most significant thing because we're still a little bit on hold in terms of uh, things. Well, we can also talk about what's brainstorm a little We can mention that we're discussing CLAs. Right? We can also say that some of us have participated in the election, observing things. Yeah, we noted that last time. Um, so maybe even, even if it could just be like a couple sentences about each of these topics. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it could be just a page and a half. That's much, but much the way that people sounds working. Yeah. So, who would who would like to? Um, is anyone willing to volunteer to to put that together? I know. I'm going to anti volunteer because it is the previous two or the previous three. One of those. Uh, yeah, you've done at least a couple. Yeah. Have you ever done one or? I no? haven't, but but I'm kind of up to my. Okay. Uh, uh, after the twenty third. Of this month, but I, you know, I may get my head back above water. Okay. Uh, but I might be able to commit then. But I feel I, I don't want to commit now, knowing that I might have to back away. Okay, Crow, how about you? Uh, okay. I'm also a little busy in the near term, but um, maybe. so how about because um, this is an administrative thing, so we can coordinate about it outside the meeting. Well, oh, as to who would do it? As to who would do it, yeah. Not, yeah, we, we, not could, we could do that, yeah. Do so it. then, how about, um, I mean, I don't know what we would email there for. Yeah, well, we could also say, like, uh, I mean, I could work something together pretty quick, right? To, um, I mean, I could, I could do it. If nobody else can do it, I can do it again. 
uh, it would be like the last few days of December, most likely. Um, but I, I should have time to do it towards the end of the time period. If, um, other people try to do it around. It's okay. Well, let's let's check in. Uh, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, because as I say, when I get back from China, then I'll see whether there's a big pile yeah. or a little pile of stuff waiting right. for me. So maybe what I'll do is I'll send an email out to all of us and just say, you know, the last week of December, and then say, can anyone do this? And then right. reply yes. Okay. Yeah, or like if, if Tony hasn't had time to do it by the time January 1st rolls around, then okay. it's awesome to me. Because okay. that, that, as we said, it's not a, a major undertaking. Yeah. Right, and there's a template too, you just have to put them. Yeah. Oh, right. Or you can like copy any of the previous ones that I made. Get that a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so then when, when should I send an email reminder out? Like, I'm good. Day, the day after Christmas is 26th, right? That's a Wednesday. So maybe 27, somewhere in there. Okay, yeah. I'm going to be flying back to the area on the 27th. Okay. I might, actually, I'm going to be flying back on the 29th, so I don't, I think the earliest I'd be able to do is like, um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Anything else on this? So, okay, well, actually, so this is administration. Um, I, Rowan, you were, you were kind enough to prepare the, the pull request to bring us up to speed for the recommendations. Yes, I lagged on that. that. I lagged on that, so okay. yeah. I need to get on that quicker. Right. Sorry, I, I thought I had not remembered to check in with it, so I wasn't sure if you were oh, no, it's, okay. no, you're, you're it's in, right. I was in my court. So um, that's that's my my first thing to do. And then um, I think that's covers it. Secretary Chan, is there anything else we're forgetting for administration? Um, no, we don't have any do we have one or anything for the commission committee. Okay. Um, okay, so then let's take public comment, seeing no members of the public. <laughs> let's um, move on to the next item. Item 5, member reports. Member reports and committee related activities not covered by another item on the agenda, including but not limited to the last election commission meeting, Department of Election Progress, research planning conferences, and news reports. Okay, so who would like to start on this one? Oh, I will. Okay. Um, so yesterday, I went to uh, an event organized by KPMG uh, having to do with open source compliance uh, and uh, a pretty uh, knowledgeable panel of people who, who came to speak. And we ended, they ended up in, in with, uh, with a subsequent discussion um, with um, discussion of um, some of the existing compliance efforts and tools that are out there, and certainly, uh, as as we go through uh, this this process, or as, as, as people go through it, the uh, the existing standards bodies um, would uh, would be relevant. That there's the work of the Chu Group, which has put together kind of what's needed for uh, an open source project office, which and it keeps track of who's doing what. And then there's another group, um, I had it written down, give me just a second. Page. Good, so on the... So, oh yeah, so the other discussion was about the Open Chain Project, which um, has membership well, the leader of it is a guy named Shane Coughlin, and, and he's involved with the Software Freedom SNLC. Oh, Software Freedom Moss. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, it's Google, Google is recently. One that's in Washington? Uh, no. No. Uh, they're, uh, they're in New York City, at Columbia, and in, um, in India. So, um, and Shane lives on an island uh, in Japan. Uh, so, so it's, it, anything that goes on 
is, is a very distributed uh, effort, but, but they're drafting a document that I agreed to uh, help edit uh, the, this latest document. But it's, it's all by way of guidelines for people who are, and organizations who are producing open source. So, mm -hmm. so that, these are things that, that we should be, uh, we should be up to speed on this open, open, the open chain project that work, I think it is, is the website that has uh, that effort. And, uh, and tubegroup.org is, is it, that's part of, it's now a Linux Foundation effort, but it also has a lot of guidelines for how one puts together a, a compliance program. Can you just say what does compliance mean roughly like in a couple so, of senses? Sure. So uh, in a couple of senses it means that if you're uh, putting, if you're building and releasing open source software or using it in so, or using open source in products that you produce, are you in compliance with the license or licenses that are uh, that you're using to build your software? Uh, that's the most significant aspect of it. Uh, and uh, beyond that, in larger organizations, you'll have uh, an open source project office that wants to know who's using what software and which version of which software uh, as, as a way to uh, minimize confusion and conflict among the different okay. things. Okay. Um, sounds good. So, so the websites again, did you want to send those out or should you just recite them? Uh, open, so open chain project oh, oh, work. Okay. And to do group org. Okay, maybe those can be in the notes. Yeah. yeah. That's the TLDL group. Yeah. Okay. And that was founded by a lot of the um, bigger companies like Facebook that, that do, that use and distribute a lot of open source. And it's a, a, a Comcast as a member. And it's, it's a, really it's, it's a information sharing mm -hmm. based on their experience and how they've done it. Um, a lot of the big companies um, have well-established processes and programs for doing this, and they have collected uh, their wisdom, as it were, uh, on, on the to-do group side. OK. Anything else? Uh, well, I know you, were, you went to one of the observation activities. Yeah. Rowan and I both went. Uh, and we, we rolled the dice. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, uh, so I guess I'll say what was my update. So Tony and I showed up for the uh, random selection, uh, which we were the only members of the public that showed up, and the elections department hadn't told anyone at the security people that we hung up and that it was an attempt. It was on a Saturday. So, yeah. hmm? It was on a Saturday. It was on a Saturday. Uh, and it usually isn't, right? So um, by the time we actually got into the building, it was half over. Really? Um, oh. Like they were, they had already selected like three or four of the, of the precincts at that point. Um, but they needed to, once they got, to, once they selected the five, the fifth, and the sixth, we watched that happen. So you're the only public witnesses? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, and they were, well, I mean, there was a camera, of course, but other than the camera, there was no public witnesses for the first four. Uh, so we saw the fifth and sixth happen, and then they had to do the extras. Um, and the uh, the getting the extra getting the last extra took a while, and so Tony and I both had to roll the dice like ten times before we got a uh, precinct within District Ten. I think I got through a few minutes before you did. Yeah, that's yeah. How many people were there aside from you two? There was some like four. Yeah. Director Arnst was there, and like something like three or four staffers from the mm -hmm. um, And then, can you just comment on the experience? Was it a good process or? Yeah, um, the the process was good. However, they didn't follow the processes that was documented, and they corrected the result there um, because they were meant to. Um, the way it's supposed to work is the first six precincts that they select are ones that they're going to audit completely, and then the extras are ju are just supposed to be for races that are not 
covered by any of the ones that were previously selected, right? So they, they roll the dice, um, they read off a three digit number, they reference it against a sheet, and then if it matches the precinct, they will read off the precinct number against the, the ballot type number. Um, so then they know which ones. But what they were doing is they were checking off one race for every precinct they selected. Um, and so that meant that they ended up, uh, the first extra that they selecting, selected was redundant. So they were doing more than they needed to? Or? Well, so they ended up fixing it later because the version oh, that was published online uh, was missing the first extra. So um, you're saying they, were, they, mm -hmm. they chose additional precincts when they didn't need to? They chose one additional precinct when they didn't need to and then not chose it okay. uh, afterwards. And in fact, it had the same ballot type as one of the primaries, mm -hmm. primary precincts. So you could very clearly tell that it was redundant. But it was because they had chosen to mark the the, the precinct was selected in the primary round against like district six race. Then they were like, oh, we don't have any like um, I don't know, like eighty seventeen races or something like that. When clearly they did because D six is a subset of eighty seventeen, uh, um, or whichever combination of races it was. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, uh, but that was I. I pointed that. I sort of pointed that out. Like I asked them why they did it, and they gave me some sort of. They gave me justification that I didn't quite accept, but um, then when it was published online, like within an hour or so, it was um, that had been corrected. Yeah. So, so the thing that I, I noticed was different. So this is the first time where I think you could actually read the numbers in the video. Oh yeah. Because the, the camera was confined to like a box. Okay. And but the the downside was that you couldn't see the people that were rolling. So you mm -hmm. just kind of saw like think some fingers. So how did we know it wasn't the recording? Well, because they were there. Who were the only ones who were the witnesses? But you could have been there like uh, a month ago when they. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, that's why you they don't have show. any. Uh, so what they did do well is they did have um, printed piece of paper with like the whole process, mm -hmm. the reference table for the numbers in the precinct, and printed blanks of the spreadsheet that they were filling out. So if you were standing there, you could see them, the, um, the screen behind the camera had the spreadsheet on it, and you could see them fill it out live. Um, and you had, I had a piece of paper that was the blank version of that spreadsheet, and so I could follow along and rest it down. Um, and so I did that, and then I checked that, the, um, that what I wrote down matched what was published later. Mm -hmm. So if they had Trump's latest tweet or something, then you know you could. Mm. <laughs> Oh yeah, so stream it. Yeah. Well, then you'd know that it was, you know, relevant almost live. Yeah, at least <laughs> the latest indictments, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, uh, I haven't done anything interesting that's not part of the case. So another a point that someone made to me um, was that they didn't actually choose six percent of the precincts. Uh, they did. Um, they claim that they're allowed to round it because uh, there's 604 precincts or something. Yeah, and it shows six. Well, but that's one percent. Sorry, one percent. Yeah, one percent of this. So they have to do 36, right? No, no, no it's one percent. Oh, it's one percent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, plus the the extras because you don't have all races when you select. In this case, they didn't. Not all races were covered by those six precincts, and so they. Shows additional precincts where they will apply as only the district ten supervisor race because none of the oh they have additionals uh, yeah so the, with the additional the ones, ones will be part with part of that yeah. yeah. but they will be partial audits just for the races well but so but some, yeah, some number of different uh, ballot types right because, <coughs> yeah. because the lines for uh, different races uh, are different right? yes yeah. but also well, like if you get unlucky like they did and you roll. You choose two adjacent district four precincts in as your the second or third uh, roles, then you're going to have a problem. Well, what's what's the rounding one? Because because like if they chose four, that would be um, point yeah six percent. No, but I, I think I think the argument was there are six hundred and four precincts. One percent of six hundred and four is six point zero four. Well, there's also so four six. precincts that have zero oh, voters. Wait, I thought they only chose five. Hmm? Oh, no, they chose six. Oh, they did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's four precincts that have zero voters. Oh, yeah. And there's two precincts that are consolidated, so they represent right. uh, 
Yeah. Well, I there's two extra that are consolidated with one. So I think the I'm, not, I'm not sure how many precincts there are total. So I um, I don't think I have the sheet for this anymore, but they did have a a list of like what the mapping from like the, the, the dice not bring to the precinct list was. And I think the consolidated precincts were probably consolidated there too. Um, oh, they, okay, for some reason I thought the oh, was five. Okay. So I have 610 precincts listed for San Francisco. Hmm. Huh. Oh. As I went, the oh, selection no. for earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. So no, I was, no, I, no, my, my point So is, 604 is four zero precincts plus two um, consolidated. So, okay. So, uh, right, makes sense, yeah. I said there's four zero no voter precincts and two that were consolidated. And that gets to 610. Two pairs that were consolidated, so that's the bridge, that's the gap. That gets you to 604. Uh, what's your point, Chris? Well, so my, my point was that six divided by 604 is, is less than. Yeah, it's just a, well, it's like 0 0.99 or something. Yeah, but so my point was that if they're rounding, mm. then they could have. You should always round up. They could have. I'm saying if they're if the rule is at the rounding, they could have chosen four, and that no, would no, no. round to. I'm saying if you ask yourself what is one percent of six or four, then the answer is two six points. Yeah, well, one percent of the number of precincts is six point zero four, right? So you should, if you had, if precincts weren't integers, then you would be auditing six point zero four precincts, um, and rounding six point zero four to six seems acceptable. Oh, so that's what I mean by rounding. Okay, I see. Uh, I don't know how to seven. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how state law. So you're saying if it, if it were, <laughs> if it came out to be six, six point five, then you, I don't know you have to do seven. Yeah, I don't know how they do that. I don't know what state law is on that. Well, but it's not technically. It's not one percent. Right. They're not auditing. They're auditing less than one percent. So if yeah, I don't know what the. What well, the law I mean, that's that's assuming you have exactly the same population in, in each precinct. So. We don't really well, the, know. It's kind I of. I mean, the law says you have to add one percent of reasons. So the. Yeah. 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 Not one percent of voters. No. Yeah. And you, don't, you, according to the law, you don't even have to add it. Not the votes that weren't in on election day, which is broken and dumb. But. Um, oh, it's all. That's a that's ballots are not required to be on. So we. Yeah, because San because San Diego didn't do it. Uh, they got sued over it and lost, and so they just had elections. Or someone down there. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. It's kind of a semantic thing. What's the difference between if you're saying one percent of six hundred four is it one percent of six hundred four rounded or the number that you must do at least this? one percent? Yeah. But then they well, also the two other precincts okay. as well, right? But okay. not completely. Uh, there were like five or there were like four or five extras. So that's point. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what does what does your county do for the random selection? Do you know, I do not know. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So then, let's see. Um, what else in terms of number reports? Just separate from the other items. I have nothing else to say. Huh? Nothing else to say. Um, um, so a couple things. So I I heard from director. Uh, Jarrell yesterday that there's no update on the hiring hmm. and there's, there wasn't a commission meeting last month so there's nothing new there. Um, I thought she had all these great candidates. Well but she also said that there's the bureaucracy takes time like it's fingerprinting and reference checking so I don't know I'm not privy to okay. whatever's happening. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's any news like nationally that might be of interest. Um, Carl, do you have anything to report? Only stuff okay. later in the weekend. Okay. okay, so let's take public comment. Let's see no more members of the public. Um, we can move on to the next item. Item six, voting system security. Discussion and possible action regarding security as it relates to voting systems and software generally. Okay, so this was an item that we had 
wanted to have at the last meeting. Um, I'm not sure if, if you have anything. I didn't yeah. have time to prepare any of my prior yeah. work. So but I do sort of have one issue that we could discuss. Okay. Um, so in the sample data, we downloaded data from the city and they have a SHA 512 file that has all of them. So I started the process of all the data uh, that I have of using SHA 512 sum to create the table. So in the ORR project, we were using SHA 256. Um, so I wanted to find out, well, you know, which hash should we use. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to do was if we have the file that has all the hashes <laughs> of all the data, then we can create a detached signature of that file and that signs everything. Mm -hmm. Then we could even have, if we wanted to have multiple signatures, we could just add a suffix into the sig file so we could kind of uh, something. So, so my idea was just to start using that process with our sample data, so we can we can um, track the source data and then the data that's created so from that. Here's a question: Like for for integrity purposes, do we have to use the same SHA that they do, or or is no. it more of a convenience? Uh, no, the only thing I did was just use it to verify. When it's their the shot because they work. They use some weird tool, so it's not in the yeah. right format. So, um, so there's no. I mean, we could use whatever we decide, and, and I would switch to that. Just the only thing we should do is make it consistent. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess for or our, oh, we're not we're not actually going to be well in our in our sample tests. We're not exposing the source files that they provided. We're just. We're just providing shots for the ORR files, right? Um, yeah. uh, we're just the output yeah, file. Okay. I see. Oh, so okay. So, so I, I'm when I validated the input file, and I also put our own SHA file on it, so that you don't have to use the uh, strangely formatted one. Okay. And and then so that's on the original data, and then the data that I create all hash all of that as well. And what I wanted to do, and I haven't done yet, was put a log that uh, says, oh, I'm reading this file and this is the mm -hmm. hash of it. And I thought it would actually be, it's not that hard when I'm reading in data to just actually compute and validate the hash. So you're, so you're saying that this is, for part of the data converter code, you're having a process of verifying the shots? Uh, well, I did it just in a batch mode beforehand. But um, I could also quite easily, you know, for every line that's read in, just update the hash and then write it out to say, you know, this is the hash of the data that was processed. Okay. And then, so the, the idea is that you have a log that has um, you know, the, the hashes of the inputs and the hashes of the outputs. It says, you know, this, is, this job used this input and created that output. And so it links the two with, with that particular point in time. Okay. Um, so. Okay. So is there? Do you have a question? Or well, so which hash should we use? So, so it turns out SHA five twelve is slight, supposed to be slightly faster, on, but it, it makes it wide. Yeah. Whereas if you use uh, two fifty six, then it fits on eighty columns mostly. So. I don't know. I thought I would ask you guys what your feeling was. I mean, so it could just be configuration option. Yeah, yeah. Well, I we should set. You know, we, we need to. We should decide for our, our own use which one we want to use and use it consistently as an example. So let me see what. Um, I mean, I I don't know why. The city chose 512, unless they said, oh, 512 is better than 256. I'm sure it's just arbitrary. Or maybe David Curry recommended that or something. Um, 
trying to see what um, big things like that they need to use. So you're, you're saying that you're using that for I looked our, at, the yeah. more output files you're asking about, which we should use for that? Is that what you're saying? Or yeah, just use consistently oh, for uh, just as a data security model. Um, okay. But I do think that it should be the code, it shouldn't be hard coded, it could just be like. Well, we could, it's not a big deal to change it, but it, okay. but it's confusing if you're using like all different ones yeah. in different spots. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so I just thought it'd be good to choose one that we sort of think is good and use that as an example. Uh, Git uses SHA1, which is uh, much simpler. Uh, I mean, so I think they're all probably fine. I mean, are you real? Uh, I'm on? trying to figure out if I can see what, uh, say, something like that we could use. Um, so I look. I try to figure. They pu they publish both SHA one and SHA two fifty six and SHA one twelve. There you go. We should use SHA one because that's too short. Um, I have no particular preference between SHA. Two fifty six parts all. Yeah, and no, I've, I've yeah. So, do you have any thoughts on the well? So, two fifty six is two fifty six is already implemented, and then five hundred twelve is what the department uses. So, well, but no preference. I mean, I mean, I mean it's easy to change two fifty six to five twelve, right? But well. I mean, but it's easy to change 512 to 256. Mathematically, mm -hmm. the 256 is, is adequate, but for... Well, the, for, you know, I think it's the only thing is it fits on... Yeah. It, it, if you do 512, you have to scroll. Well, let's do the shorter one. Then. Okay. Yeah. So so I'll switch over to, okay. to 512, or sorry, from 512 to 256. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so the other thing is, I just, I wanted to set it up with my hardware key as an example. And so one thing I thought we should discuss is like do okay, we is want this to, an avoiding system component? You know, I well, know. specifically the security. Oh, we're on security. Okay, yeah. sorry. So, um, well, I mean it's related to avoiding systems, so we can table it to them, but it's it's on security at least. Mm -hmm. I mean this is maybe it's more worth postponing it, but I don't don't have any other issues on security, but. What, you can finish your phone. Yeah, so do we want to like create a key, you know, for the tag, you know, for our data that we are putting in our repos or well then one person would have to maintain it, right? Well we could have two we could have the same key with two two uh, right, you to the side parts. Oh I guess you can transfer between people in person. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have a key that we all have to yeah, we can do that too. I'm sure there's like advanced stuff. I don't know. Any three of any three of us can merge. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's like it's, it's actually cool. possible to do three of five. That would be cool. Yeah, it, it's like the old movies where you know you show up to the same. Yeah, exactly. More than one person needs to bring a key. Well, we can have two keys. One, so I don't know if we should have a shared key or just like each have our own key and assign it or well I don't I don't have enough information like well like if there's just one does that mean if it gets stolen then or this is like No you start with a new one. Okay. If you lose it. Yeah well um I mean it we can do a demo with the multiple keys but that's yeah, or we could, if it's if it's possible to um, to have multiple UV keys with the same private key, then we could just share, just have one key for a time, right? Yeah. If you're saying it's possible, then yeah. But I'm, I mean, still, I'm still not sure. Like the thing I asked at the last meeting was to kind of have like a like a description of what would be the workflow and also like the caveats. Like if we each got a UV key, does that mean that if one of us lost it, we would all have to get new ones, or or um. You would at least have to put a new key on it, right? What's that? You, if someone lost their key, then you we would have to switch keys, right? You could have to. You might want to create a new key. But you could do that on the same physical key, right? Right. And then would we, does that mean we would need to um, go back and like 
re-sign everything or something and like check that it's still valid or how does that work? Um, the, the way that, so far as I know, the way that people handle this kind of thing is um, that you have, um, the way that- It's only like the going forward stuff. Right, so, so the, the way that like people like certificate authorities manage this is you have a root key that basically never travels. It does, and then all it does is sign the keys that are really good use. So you have like a hierarchy of two level hierarchy of keys. So you have a root key that is only used for signing like the day to day keys. And then you have a day to day key that we like give to everyone that we use to sign actual commits and releases and software and whatnot. Um, and then if that one is lost, um, when you create the key, you also create a revocation certificate that you start securing and then you can revoke it using that. You can publish that key to revoke. Um, and you can create a new key and sign that with the root key and continue using that. And then additional, additionally, the way that like HTTPS keys are used for HTTPS work is like that expiry days and stuff like that. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm, so, I'm open to trying that out. I mean, we could just see what it's like. And so, yeah, so the, so one issue was uh, like a lot of the software doesn't work unless you have a certificate from some certificate authority. Yeah. So, but then like I mean, the certificate just, authorities are things like used for websites, which have like right. a ninety day expiration, which isn't. Oh, it's not encrypted and it has very aggressive expiration. Yeah. Um, so I don't. But then it's like I don't know how meaningful it is to use some external certificate authority. Yeah. Or do we make um, our own model that's that's more just a? I don't demo? know. I'm a, I'm a web guy, so I know how it works for for HTTPS and not Yeah. I mean, it, it almost doesn't make sense to use an H, you know, a HTTPS what? key for signing data it's, because it's really well, different. What does Debian do? Uh, what do people? Debian. Debian does this weird thing where well. Debian uses these things the way they were intended to use, to be used, and you basically have to be Debian to do it. Um, which they just publish their root key. No, they have a web of trust, um, which is the way that you're actually meant to do this. Oh, you mean um, back from the the yeah the GNU, and it works. And there's like there's basically key. one. I mean, I, I, I might be exaggerating, but there's basically only one big functional web of trust in this app. Um, and I mean, there might be a few more, but Can we use the web of trust. To so what, what, what that means is that um, my understanding of how the Debian stuff works is that there is a group of keys that they trust and create keys can sign each other. So like there is a procedure by which if you meet someone in person, they can like prove to you that they are the owner of that key and they can like show you their password or whatever and prove that they are the owner of that community. Uh, yeah, I know a few people. So maybe you could give them the sign. So I've done that a long time ago. Is this that was like we're not 25 years ago. Possibly. Um, but yeah, so they, they, this creates like, um, this like creates a sort of like web shaped <laughs> ecosystem where there's like a core of keys that are extremely trusted. So like a system in Beck Alley. <laughs> Except <laughs> that it works for, but yeah, key signing parties. You can see how those go. But it was written right. for PGP. Because PGP, PGP has its own like key ring, but all the other like normal now standardized software uses these the certificate chains yeah. inst instead of the PGD Yeah, chains. so there's, there's two ways to do it. There's a decentralized approach that Debian uses, which is like, you have this web of people that have vouched for each other's identity, and it results in this like core group that is, that like has like extremely, you know, extremely trusted keys because they've been vouched for by like a bunch of like highly reputable people. Highly reputable people. Um, and so like, if you have, if your key has been signed by a sufficient number of people from that core group, so then you become part of the core group, and then you can sign so things as being officially like Debian things. And what Carl's describing is a lot of the other modern systems work in more as a top-down thing, where there's like an authority that is trusted to sign things, and the things that they sign can sign other things. And so okay, so yeah. which method should we use then? This would just be for the root key, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. So having a root key and sub keys is kind of like a Authority thing that way, um, although it works with the web thing too. But maybe it's worth demoing that because you could say this is like a model. The root key would be like a secretary of state or something. We're just trying it out. I mean, we could we could. It, yeah, nothing is permanent because yeah. it's all 
just an illustration. Mm -hmm. So I had gotten away from all this, and then I wanted to create social logins for uh, our website. So there's a website called One All. I don't know if you know this, but in order to make your people able to log in via LinkedIn to a different website, then there's you know, these client keys. And <coughs> I just went through this yesterday. Uh, so um, uh, the, this is pretty, it's pretty cool technology, and, and it does put all the stuff to, uh, to use. So, so you can have a, a site to which people can log in normally, or you can use the credentials that somebody has from another site, which is, uh, you know, in effect, passed along by using this, these, these uh, uh, strings. Hmm. So, and then sort of related topic, do we want to like somehow simulate like a, you know, ordinary production use of a signature and then like some uh, official signature? Like, 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 we, like every time we run it, we could just have the software generate its own. Um, so I think maybe one way to focus this would be like, what do we want San Francisco to do? You know, and then that's kind of what we should be after. As opposed to like, what does TAC want to do? Like, well, what would we? Well, what exactly. Would we want? What what, we, what TAC should do is demonstrate what we think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think, San Francisco what, what, people should do. what I think San Francisco should do, and I'm curious to hear what Paul thinks too, is that there should be like just the way that like the Secretary of State should have a key, there should uh, the Department of Elections should have a private key that is used to sign like things that they publish. Uh, so like election results they publish. What about like the SF gov certificate or something? Uh, yeah, like if they have existing prior keys, that's that's great. Well, I mean, I, I so think in that sense, all I think you need to do is for the software to be able to be pointed to a private key file and like say like use this private key to sign stuff. Well, or I do the uh, the Harvard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like whatever. Well, do you think maybe the San Francisco government already has the process for this? That's possible. Um, well, they're not signing. The only thing they they're they're not signing signing the GPS, I don't. They're not signing any of their data. Well, they're not signing not, elections. Not elections. I'm talking about someone in the city government. Like, uh, it's possible. Maybe, but I don't know of anything. So, so it's something that, D, that DT would probably be able to, to find out. Um, so what would be the ask? Say, do they have a so way of signing? Is there well? You, are they using maybe, digital signatures? Yeah, maybe. If, yeah, maybe ask like, is there any sort of existing process where like data gets signed, gets, data gets published that, that is signed with digital signatures? Is there like well, like, and you have to distinguish what you mean by digital signature because sometimes they say you know if you write the pin number one two three four five oh, in your box, yeah, that's yeah. considered a signature. No, no, no yeah. So, so are there? What we mean is digital, you know, cryptographically yeah. digitally signed. Yeah, publicly cryptography. Um, and so, like, you know, does the, does the city have a public key or a certificate or any of, any of those kinds of things that they use to cryptographically sign things that are published? Um, I mean, or they, they use they have, for HTTPS or... I mean, can they, but I'm saying if they have... If we ever... The domain certificate, is that sufficient to bootstrap the process? Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's not, that's no. insecure though. So, so there, there are two sides to, to this, right? There, there's the one side which says, we are who we say we are, right? Which is the uh, signature, if you will. And then there's the, uh, who can access this, which is having the key to, to do it, right? Well, there's two things. One is verifying signature. And the, the simple signature verifications rely on the certificate chain that might include, you know, the web certification. But that's a little bit different than di digital signatures, which are generally not used. But I, but I think we want to, you don't want to use the you know, web-based certificate chain because that's easy to, to you know, to fake. It's a, um, they're also using lesson drafts for their website. What's that? They're yeah. Using lesson for their website. Oh, uh, San Francisco. Yeah. So they have a what looks like a four month. Yeah. Um, a four month lifetime on the certificate, which is actually kind of long for lesson Uh. Yeah. 
But so also I think normally you'd want the machine that you're running on the server to have a hardware key on it. So when it runs, it can sign the data immediately. Just to say, you know, this data was produced on this particular machine. So and but then that's different than saying, okay, I the director of elections from the city and county of San Francisco hereby certify this statement of vote. But the fact that they use certificate at all, again, that's a good sign. Well, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just a it's question just for the website because they should yeah, yeah, but, work. but it means when you have this discussion with them about uh, security and certification, it's something that's already in the uh, local ecosystem. Yeah, sort of. Not that usually. Well, okay. It's not zero. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. Okay, so 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 getting back to like what SF should do, like like let's say let's say they don't have this process. Mm -hmm. and like it sounds like they probably don't have this process. Then what what is do we need to ask them to create this process or can we use something else instead? Well I think we should demo the process and then ask this is what you should probably use. Well but it's also optional, right? Like it's I think we should make something that demonstrates it, but I guess if we're, I guess in the capacity of us making recommendations to the city, uh, then yes. Um, in the capacity of us building uh, demonstration software that works for city's purposes, it could be an optional thing. Well, we don't really have to build any software per se. It's right. just a matter of Figuring out installing. The yeah. So then, it. in that case, I, I mean, we, we have to get some keys and. Well, I would. I was sort of planning on using the hardware key. Well, do they, they need to keep something secure and have a process yeah. for signing stuff? Yeah, so you would need to... Kind of like you need to generate a private fact alley kind of thing? Well, yeah, so you need to generate a private, uh, private key. Then you need to meet the Secretary of State in the back alley and have him sign the private key. Oh, we're not the Secretary of State. To well, I mean, that, that would be one way to do it. Um, um, that would be, I mean, if, if there was a key specifically for the Elections Department, that would, that would be a, a, a sensible authority, right? Like, um, you would trust, like a random person would trust the Secretary of State's office to verify the identity of the people who are well, running elections in, in not, San Francisco. Not only that, it's the Secretary of State would be the one that says these signatures are considered legal and valid and only these signatures. All, or, or, I mean only these keys. So they're controlling who, the Secretary of State is controlling who so, is allowed to certify. So basically we just want like the biggest name we can find be able to vouch for. Well, we don't have to vouch for. Yeah, us. so you have changed that way, right? Unless so the secretary, I don't even know if the secretary of state's office has that capability. Okay. So, but yeah, the, the basic the basic idea behind it is like the secretary of state's in an ideal world, the secretary of state's office has a key that they keep securely that they use to sign um, things like election results, um, and then people see that signature and say like we. We trust that this means that we came from the Secretary of State's office. Um, and then you can you can use the hierarchy to say, like, okay, the Secretary of State's office signs the, the key that the elections department of NSF uses. Then if you trust the Secretary of State's office, then you also now by extension trust yeah. the things that yeah. are department of elections puts out. My concern is that it's probably gonna be like a long process to get the yeah. Secretary of State. So you should I mean I think SF should start what what SF would do would do for a start is just have a is just have a Private so mostly a lot of times you can wait for the state for the level above you to get their stuff together later. Yeah, a lot of people just use self-signed certificates, yeah. and then you just publish your public key on your website, and that's what people use as yeah, verification. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could, if you wanted, set up a demo certificate authority. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the second level. I'm trying to figure out if. If there's any sort of useful government uh, certificate authority, I'm not finding it yet. Just the Secretary of State's website uh, uses Global Sign, um, and I know there are governments that have CAs. Like the Dutch government CA is in your laptop. Your laptop trusts the Dutch government CA. It's kind of ridiculous. But uh, my phone trusts the Dutch government CA. I didn't even buy it there. Um, but uh, if there's not any existing High level government infrastructure that works for this, then yeah, so we should maybe start with self sign and then work away at a public time. Okay. It'll be 
you know, it'll not be worse than what happens now, which is not. Yeah. No, I just want to bring it up to get your thoughts or ideas. And uh, we could just start using it and kind of grow it. I mean, I think it would be nice to have a, if we could come up with a document telling DT what they should do. You know, what do they need to do? How much, how much is it going to cost them? Like, what, you know, what software they're going to need? And then, and then they can do that, you know? Yeah. And like I said, I have two hardware-based keys. Uh, one was like 40 bucks, I think, and the other was like uh, 80 or 90. I mean, which is think, not too bad. I think this is nice, but I also think it's not um, super high in the priority list of like, if there's only three things that DT will listen to us about. I'm not, oh, I see what you're saying. one of them, because like, um, I would love for election data in particular to be digitally secured because we've had the technology for like 30 or 40 years now and um, maybe 15 governments aren't using it for like one of the most critical things that they do. But I mean, at the same time, um, we seem to be doing okay, at least for like, you know, the the, the level of like, you know, transmission of counting results to uh, the Secretary of State's office. Like, um, I don't think there's a huge problem where like, you know, that someone's like impersonating counties to the Secretary of State. Well, I don't think well, so. Well, it, it can happen. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, yeah no, it's, I mean, <laughs> you know, because, so that's the whole thing with nowadays of hacking, you know, if you, if we can demonstrate that this represents a level of security and what we have now is, you know, I mean, if Russia hacks the server and changes the data, no one would ever know. Okay, well, here's, so here's an action item. Like, do you think that could someone, or maybe even find somewhere on the web, like, or just come back to the, for the next meeting with a document saying, like, here's what DT should do, or here's what the Secretary of State to do, should do. And that, that way we can, and then here's what an activist in some other state can do to their Secretary of State. And that, because I imagine it's going to be the same for everybody, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sufficiently straightforward to say, here's the, here's the problem, here's the risk. And to mitigate that risk and, have, and increase confidence in, in the... Is this Secretary of State? It's a lot. It's a Secretary of State's website, but... Uh, I just found that there's a section in California law that defines things around the digital signatures. Yeah, really? it's so from a long, I remember about the debate of putting this in, and there's... Um, so we should familiarize ourselves with the, what the law says around this stuff. So, I mean, I think it's worth pursuing on like a separate track, mm -hmm. not that we just pulled up stuff. But, um, but I think the ba basic thing is, is to start using yeah, digital let's, signatures. let's do that. Yeah, so um, do you want to come back to the So next up, next, uh, I sh well, I'll report on the, our voting system project, but uh, the plan would be that by the next meeting, the data that we have is our sample data should be, should include digital signatures. And just maybe just write out instructions for what people are supposed to do. Right, mm -hmm. and I can also, well, I'll figure it out. So I can write up what you all, can do to, to not too expensively get a okay. hardware based key. Okay. Okay. So I think everyone that went to a developer's conference got a free Ruby key. Forget, I guess it was the uh, container conference. Mm -hmm. It's like over it. Okay. All right, so um, is there anything else in the site before we move on? Okay. So seeing no members in the public, no public comment. Um, Next item. Item seven, contributor license agreements for OSV TAC projects. Discussion of possible action regarding contributor license agreements for contributing to OSV TAC projects. Okay, um, Rowan, do you want to? Yeah, so this is so pretty much the same document as last time, but um, the only things that's the only things that's changed is um, at the very top of the second page. Um, that paragraph is different. Uh, last time, it said that um, we would agree to license uh, the contribution only under the terms of license or licenses which we're using on submission day, and yada, 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 um, or uh, the GPLv3, and it did not leave open any relicensing. Um, Chris didn't like that, so I changed it. 
now it says that we will um, that we are allowed to relicense contributions um, to any licenses approved by the Open Source Initiative, um, including both permissive and copyright copyright licenses. Sure. Good. Uh, that's what. That's uh, there's there. a capitalization error. Oh, where? Uh, licenses which we own the same yeah, line. We is supposed to be capitalized. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's capitalized consistently for his entire document. I see. It's one of those legal. Things. Yeah. Um, so that's the only change that I made. I was supposed to make that right after the previous meeting, and then Chris was supposed to take this document to the city attorney's office. And I didn't get around to doing this until like three weeks in. So yeah. I'm guessing that you haven't had time to talk to the city attorney's office. Well, I actually sent you an email today, oh. this afternoon, saying that I, I did forward him the information, and I'm going to be discussing with him. So he has the draft, and um, so. I think the words I used to were that the um, wheels are turning now, I think, or something along those lines. Um, so, a uh, question. Mm -hmm. You were going to ask him what he thought like the ownership should be or something like that as well? or? Well, I mean, I already asked him that, but it was more like I was going to ask him about this in light of that information. Mm -hmm. But um, but I, before I get to that, though, I wanted to clarify one thing, Ron. Like mm -hmm. similar to how you clarified the wording in the minutes, I wouldn't say I I didn't like it before. Okay. But um, it was more just. But you wanted the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And also, also personally, I'm not. I'm kind of undecided on whether it should be permissive and copyleft or just copyleft. Yeah. There's also a, there is also a copyleft option. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I mean, this is an organization that publishes a template with like five yeah. different choices for this so, paragraph. I'm not like a hard, I'm not hard and fast on this stuff. So, um, so yeah, I, I can. I've already started um, discussing this with them. Um, have any Have any of you thought more about whether we should allow for the license to be changed, or or do people have a preference on that? It opens up. Cans of worms okay. because of dependencies. Multiple cans. Yeah, okay. because of dependencies. But in fact, open source projects have to know what to do with this. Well, uh, I would prefer not to. But isn't dependencies one of the reasons why people change it? Yes. I mean, because, oh, we need to, ours is too restrictive or, or something, and then it causes a problem with. Exactly. When you're mixing with something else. Exactly, but but if you know that you can change it, then it places some restrictions on what you choose to, you know, and, and you'll avoid certain components because of the problems associated with that dependency. Yeah, and I think Brendan's comment last month was people are moving away from these you know, more restrictive licenses to um, or permissive ones. Well, you know, the other thing that, that happened that he didn't mention, and I, I, you know, I just learned about this recently, is that people are moving to static linking from dynamic linking, and that has a big implication uh, because uh, if you think about the LGPL, the things that are okay with the LGPL in a dynamically linked environment suddenly become not okay if everything is statically linked. Right? Because then... Well, I don't know what LGPL says about well, its uh, linkage. The, well, it's, it's for libraries, basically. And right, so, but it just... So, if, I mean, the whole GPL thing is about uh, if you use LG, if you use GPL license software, then everything that's in that software has to be made open. The LGPL was created to right. have a separately, you know, a separate piece of software that's called as a library, and that way you don't. But I don't know. I didn't think it had well, anything to do with linkage. It's just whether you have to use it as is. Yeah, but there's there's also I mean. Or or make the library. If, if you bind it to the existing, to the rest of the code then that kind of magically makes everything GPL. It means that you have to... Uh, I don't think it does. So I'm not an expert. Well, GPL was written 
with C in mind, C code in mind, right? And then technology advanced. And you're not really, there's now a lot of other languages that are more dynamic where you don't link uh, libraries together in the way that you did, the way it's described in the Yeah, but it has to do with, uh, the discussion came up in the context of jars. Right, and like, there's, um, it, it, there's a lot of arguments about, and it's kind of unclear what the linking thing in GPL means. So, so Don Jar is Java Archive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, but um, it's a physically separate file. This is the same as a dot .so, so. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's just how do you package and distribute? If you distribute an archive, you know, if, or an RPM yeah, this, or this whatever, is, and yeah, one thing is, all is But now you're distributing a container. In many cases. Well, jar is a container. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I mean, that's well, that's one file. Um, yeah, I would agree that if you're distributing one thing that contains um, a bunch of different packages, and that it's probably linking for the purpose of GPO. But, like, what that means is that um, you can't. Uh, I mean, you can still pull in things that are. Other open source licenses. Well, this is, yeah, but you know, there's some debate, and if you talk to the FSF, you know, they're going to take the hard line on this. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a series of legal cases that people pointed me to going on in Germany because there's somebody, and, and I haven't had the chance to research it, but, but somebody is effectively a copyright troll going after this. Uh, this issue of you know, licenses and compliance. Uh, I haven't I haven't looked at the details, but um, yeah, it's, it's the usual. This is the lawsuit against VMware. And now uh, it's a different one. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. So. So I think the the net net of this is that we have to allow people to change licenses, but. Uh, you know, we should be aware that that can be problematic. Well, but it's also, I feel like the, the cases where you want to change licenses, correct me if I'm missing something here, are the case where someone else wants to incorporate your software and can't for licensing groups. Like, it's, it's much less common that you can't incorporate someone else's software. I mean, unless they use a license that's incompatible. Yeah. A lot of licenses are one way compatible with really, each That's an interesting point. Yeah. So, like, I mean, you know, there might be some library out there that has a, a weird license, like, but I mean, even like M Apache is going to be fine, like maybe MPL is incompatible with GPL or something. But, um, or like it's GPL2 only and it's like, and you're like a GPL3 plus project or something like that. But unless you have a weird compatibility like that, like most non-GPL software you're going to want to pull in, if it's not GPL itself, it's going to be like Apache or MIT or some. Yeah, but somebody, yeah, right? somebody wants to pull in a, a FARO license. Okay. That's, that's okay to pull in. But yeah, if you want to pull in like a FARO license code or GPL2 license code, that, might, that would be, you could not do that. But like most of the non-GPL license stuff that you want to pull in is going to be like, Permissive license stuff, and so that's okay. Well, so what would be an example where someone else can pull something? Or so um, the reverse situation is more common, where if you maintain an MIT license project or an Apache license project, and you want to pull in data or something from a GPL license thing, you can't. Um, but that would mean, in our situation, that would mean that someone else wants to embed our code or reuse our code for some purpose that they can't use it for without GPL and the rest of their code base. And that, you know, the designers of GPL consider that a feature not a bug. That's the whole point of copyleft is keeping that is keeping it free and making sure that it can't be reused and things are not themselves uh, free of the license. But in this contributor agreement, we're saying the possibility of making that change is open. Yes, and including relicensing in under non copyleft license. Yes, uh, you could also say that it will only be relicensed under another copyleft license, but that's I feel like the the. the the use case for doing that is going to be pretty rare. But it has to be one approved by the open source initiative. Yes. So it, it will be a real open source license, but it won't be like something junky that is not really an open well, source like license. Well, the case I was worrying about is like if there's some 
like technicality in one of the copyleft licenses that we're using right. that sort of like it nullifies like everything unless we make this one tweak. Yeah. You want to, but that would, that would like throw the whole world into disarray, right? Well, yeah. right, but also like if we're if we're being smart, we, we license under GPLv3 or later, right? So if something like oh, that arises, yeah. the Free Software Foundation by themselves can fix that by just releasing. Oh, okay. so then maybe that's, that's maybe point. that's maybe that kind of assuages me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, if, if there's something, yeah, like if there's something weirdly wrong with GPL like that, like yeah, first of all, the rest of the world will be affected. Um, the Free Software Foundation will notice and fix it. Um, and they will have to release a new version of the license to do that, but if we license in a way that says we three or later, you're essentially already giving yourself the right to relicense yeah, to anything that the Free Software Foundation calls a version of GPL. Is that what our copyright now says? GPL, V3, yeah. or later, yeah. or later? Yeah, yeah I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then, okay, so then, because if we're not going to have the license changing, then we can just. We don't need the CLA, that was sort of what we're thinking. Oh, you're saying you don't need a, well, yeah. Um, because we only need the, the, the weaker thing that Brandon was the sign off. Oh, the sign off, yeah, yeah, you still want certif uh, certification of origin, but that's weaker and there's other ways to do it. Yeah, you don't need people to agree to a possible future relicensing. Yeah, there's no, well, the point Brandon made is that there's no reason for a CLA if you're not. If you're not going to relicense. Yeah, my original CLA did not provide for it. Yeah. Although, although on the other hand, the CLA is a common enough concept yep. that yeah. uh, that the contributors are used to seeing them, and you know it is a form of protection against mm -hmm. who knows what might happen in the future. Okay. So yeah, and there are there are people that use CLAs without. Um, I mean, I would say probably most CLAs have free license provisions, but there are people who use CLAs not for that reason, but just because they want like a more legally solid thing for the certification authority. But it depends on how paranoid your legal department is. That's a lot of things okay. Yeah, it also comes up uh, in, in companies in, in the whole merger and acquisition space when, yeah. you know, the, the, when the acquiring company wants to make sure that the target company actually owns all the software. Mm -hmm. so, so again, it's become pretty yeah. yeah, and also like when you have um, this is a bit less of an issue with this project, but like there's a couple of big open source projects like OpenStack, for example, um, and, and Docker itself too. Like um, OpenStack in particular, there's not really a company around it. There's multiple companies that use it and contribute to it. So there's a couple of big companies that all contribute to the software. But like they, there's people that, that a lot of people that contribute to like the, the copyright is definitely not owned by them. It's owned by the company because their whole job is to contribute to OpenStack for that company, right? So, if they um, have to you have the company has to sign off on, I mean, the individual is- Wait, does your company have? So the, the OpenStack um, software comes out of NASA, originally, and, uh, then, and then uh, they subsequently created, somebody subsequently created OpenStack Foundation. The OpenStack Foundation is now managed by Linux Foundation, right? Yeah, but the, the, the point was that there's, there's a couple of big companies that like, where like people's entire day jobs are to work on the software. And so there is no way around the fact that the company owns copyright on their work. Yeah. And so the company has to sign off on like, yes, we certify that this is really ours and that it gets to be licensed under this and its support. Did you have, do you have to get permission from Wikimedia? Uh, no, I, um, my contract says some weird things that some people that I've talk to claim uh, can't be true, but um, I'm pretty sure that it says that I get to retain copyright on my work. But also there's, you couldn't construe this as work for hire, right? Like, it's very clearly outside of my job duties. And, it's, and, and there's no relation to any work that I do with media. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So then I'll, I'll um, also my contract requires that they license anything that I produce under GPL anyway, so. <laughs> but that's not a contract that most people have. Yeah, yeah I see. Okay. Um, okay, so then I'll, I'll continue my discussions with the attorney and then um, yeah. we'll, we can continue this. So the next I time. think you can also just say, you know, an option is no CLA. 
Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we might as well see what he says for this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then some other, some other way of Because, like, Rowan was saying, we might want to have one anyways. Well, it, it depends. I mean, I, I'm a fan of having something more lightweight than a CLA. Okay. But um, I'm also a fan of not trying to write City 3. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, City 10 is likely to be happier with something that looks like an agreement that. Yeah, that's, that's why you see that. Yeah. yeah, unless it causes more work. Mm -hmm. Not going to be that many contributors. Yeah. But it also means that. Um, uh, so related to that, um, I did just I did to talk to someone who possibly maybe might contribute some things, which will, which we could talk about what that is in I eight. But um, how how do you feel about accepting um, as a contribution at this point? Well, I think we need to settle this. You want to still sell that first? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, that was the reason for it. Okay. Um, okay. So. Let's take a public comment on this item, seeing no members of the public. Is there any more, more on this before we move on? So uh, I guess we don't need to approve it now until after your, the attorney has a chance to comment on it. Yeah, we just need yeah. to see what he says, because, yeah. We have not approved any version of this time. Yeah. Um, OK, so next item. Item 8, <coughs> voting system component development. Discussion of possible action regarding OSB TAC developing and or facilitating the development of one or more voting system components as a proof of concept. Okay. So who wants to start off with uh, someone who's not me because I have no screen here? Okay, I have uh, some news to announce. Okay. So I pretty much finished the data converters, except I um, have one issue to resolve. I, I think. There's either five or six different IDs in use <laughs> between all the different pieces of data. So I still have yet to write a correlator. So the way I have to do it, I think the only way that's practical is use the candidate's name associated with a contest ID, and then you build a table and you match up the candidate names with the possible <laughs> IDs and sort it out. That's actually what I do for my uh, result scanners. And so that way I can correlate all the IDs from all the different pieces of data that I... So, so anyway, I have the election JSON file that we used before. I made a couple of minor tweaks in it. Like I, I give the number of write-in slots instead of saying how many write-ins, or is it true or false, or a few other things. And, and I also need to... Well, I, I just postponed using a config file, but I want to add a config file in so we can like correlate the names and the headers to figure out what level they are and if they're a district name and a few other things like that. So there's a few minor things to do, but otherwise. And, and I also want to finish extracting that there's um, precinct to ballot type and contest to ballot type. Mm -hmm. um, is that and there's like that extract the data from different things so uh, we can are we going to want to expand the, the JSON? To uh, we don't need to. It's really side files just for our auditing and checking. Okay. So, you know, I can write out like what the ballot type precinct or contest correlation is from you know one data and then check it with the other data. So we can just cross check the DFM EMS data with the, the Omnibout data and result data. Uh -huh. Okay. Agreed. It's not needed for input to the or well, I know we, we had talked about having a customizable results based on ballot type number. Uh, that's right. A, that's yeah, we could also do that's, uh, that's an extra feature. But, uh, so for that, we would have to add that to the yeah. JSON, but that's uh, easy enough to do. Excellent. So the only, yeah, the, the other thing is just figuring out what um, kind of headings we want to use. Mm -hmm. um, like, like, do we want to? There's an abbreviated name for contests in the results, uh, the, the statement of bolts data, and then you have the headings that are in the ballots. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the order is slightly different. I, I, it turns out they put all the RCV contests at the end, but I think it makes more sense to put the RCV contest with 
the others where they go in yeah. the offices. Yeah. So I have to fix that. Okay. Um, so when I get it all, maybe we should meet or something to like try running things and work out the details and and yeah. Go in. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, okay. There was there was something that just slipped my mind. Um, okay. Well, that's that sounds good. So, um, and I'll have data for June and November, um, because those that's where I have the ballot extraction detail. Oh, and then so then the final input JSON files, are you going to store those in the sample data repo? Yeah. Okay, in a separate. Well, so it's, I mean, we, we may want to have to work out how we, okay. are we going to put okay. things, but uh, in the sample, uh, data area, it's divided by date, and so then there's different subdirectories under that for the different kinds of data. Like I have a EMS data, uh, which comes from DFM, then I have OmniBallot, which is the ballot definition. Then uh, there's like PDFs and ballot scans, and then the result data. Okay, but then what I'm saying is the, the output of the converter that generates the input to, or is that it's, sort of useful too? Yeah. Okay. 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 Excellent. It's, okay. And then you know, we'll probably want to create another directory for the like HTML outputs or what you know, whatever output reports there are. Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds good. So it also contains the downloaded data as well. So I wrote uh, downloading scripts that will will uh, fetch all the data off the web server. Okay. Okay. Great. So. Um, and then, Ron, do you want to do that? Yeah, so um, I uh, so I put in some very basic structure for uh, being able to have CSS in our, uh, in our result reports. Uh, I did some very minimal CSS of 20 lines. So uh, did, did, did you clone the repo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I so you were able to do that OK? Yeah, were you able to actually run, run, yes. run the test? I was able to run anything. Uh, I haven't tried running the, oh, I was able to run the thing that like remakes the test. I haven't actually run the test myself. Um, but I was able to run the script like adjust the expected test output. Oh, okay. So you were able to change the template. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and, the, and the changing templates works. So what I have now is just 20 lines of CSS and really all it does is. Can you show it to us? Yeah. So the, let me go back to. stuff around. Um, so and I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it's better. Okay, it looks automatically better than it did before. So yeah, the, um, this is also how you can see, by the way, that I have some issues. One of them is that um, the sample data is wrong because it, it flips the oh, whole total score. It's, uh, oh, it's, <laughs> oh, okay, great. Well, it's, it's kind of a hand edit of cutting and pasting, so there may be some. All right, well, this is flips. Alejandro Fernandez did not win the issue, but um, I actually had to copy the data from a different contest. Okay. So, uh, but in any case, maybe we should the, change the names. The change that I made here is like a lot of the stuff is still in style, but the tables are, are now styled. They have borders. Um, the I decided to do it because this is all like other stuff, right? This is this bottom section of the table is just like you know the number of voters and number of ballots cast, and it's less important. I decided to delineate it with double lines. When I saw David Carey's email, he does it with like a gray background, which is what I'm actually going to switch to. Okay. But I didn't have time, so instead I um, uh, I use this double line stuff in the in the template. I also change the template a little bit, so this is actually a table with two T body tags because that's something you're apparently allowed to do. Um, yeah, that's me. And you know, so there's like so there's borders now. The table headings are not centered anymore. Um, the tables are, because they look kind of ugly otherwise, the tables are now forced to always be at least a half of the width of the page, even if they would otherwise want to be smaller. Um, and then if you go to the, uh, to the detailed results for something, then, you know, I just did the same thing here. It's just a very simple treatment of the table. And then for RCV, I did something similar to what uh, David Carey suggested, where I, because you implemented the score map that 
exactly matches what he asked for, except for like the metadata rows at the bottom. Well, he gave me that in advance. So right. I, I figured that you you probably had received it already, and then independently, I already decided to highlight the eliminations. Cool. Um, I fixed the signs on the transfer column so that there's now actually pluses and minuses there. Um, and um, when someone gets eliminated, there's a red uh, bar. I think in Davis, things yellow, but like whatever, one line change. Oh, did you change the template so it inserts a plus sign? Uh, yes, um, it makes it the, it makes the transfer value always be assigned a number that's assigned. So of course, the negative numbers are already have minus because it's so. We should probably add a function to do that in the code. Yeah, we should probably have a function to like format number with sign. I I was lazy and didn't do that. So, so we can so, well, we can fix that. Yeah, yeah. Well, instead, what I did is I said if the candidate is not being eliminated yeah. this round, then three minute plus. Yeah. Because I know the number is going to be positive, right? Which is kind of ugly and not not super kosher, but whatever it works. And then yeah, this if the candidate is being eliminated as he is as class on the style that is uh, a red background, so we can um, uh, do some more. So I want to one of the things that I was missing and and that I tried to uh, tried to implement in the back end and I sort of got nowhere and gave up is um, I want to know who the winners are of different contests, and we don't have it in our results format right now. Um, right. Uh, oh, it's not there now? No, it's not there now. And there's two reasons why it's not obvious and why it's not computable. One is um, mm -hmm. you, we have multiple winners. Board of Education contests and some other things have multiple winners. Like Board of Education is three. ADEV has like 14 winners. Uh, you know, you get multi-winner contests. Well, also, um, we don't want the results for her to be computing anything, too. No, exactly. No, 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 it's, so that's actually one other thing that I have to add. But, um, so, in, uh, in a message from you, you act, I think you actually had very good terminology. Um, so you said, I think you, you upgraded the one that I proposed. So I think we, we had a code for elected Meaning okay. the results are certified. Yes. Okay. Oh, and leading. And then he said leading, meaning that you know based on the count so far they will be winning. So if you right. have three elected, there will be three oh, marked with leading. Yeah. The other thing, and I've actually seen this, is a tie. Mm. So so you could have um, you know some. Among the bots, some number of T's that, that that are tied, and then you can just say nothing, I guess, or or we could say or eliminate. Or to run off or something. If well, and then uh, that, yeah, the other case would be um, they're not elected, but they're advancing to a runoff. Yeah, which is what happens in all our practice. And, and normally, uh, so the question is, do we want to differentiate between the certified results or or? We don't say, normally you'd say leading, you'd have two of them. So would we just say two of them leading, if they're, or do we want to actually code it as advancing to a runoff? Well, I, I, I was suggesting that you have, you say two are leading, but then you have a code that represents, it says what does leading mean? So it means either elected or advanced to runoff or tie okay. or. Um, so, so actually there's, so when you, a lot of these races, if someone gets more than uh, 51%, then they're basically winning. And if, if otherwise, then two people advance to runoff. So normally you want to distinguish well, that. that. Doesn't happen in California, but it happens elsewhere. What? Doesn't happen in California. No, it happens. Uh, it's normal here, but not for primaries though. Like not not for state level offices, but oh. judicial offices and a oh, lot of schools and uh, yeah. most of the like county offices work that way. I guess it's because we have RCP and SF. You don't know this. Well, you, if you have a right choice voting, you don't have that issue. Yeah. Well, so I have. think that having the leading and then the extra code could solve it. So would we just use a uh, runoff, meaning and they would go to runoff. And is it the same if you have multiple winners? That is, you may have the first and the second being clear winners, and the third and the fourth tied. And there are three positions. Well, that's, that's an edge case. Yeah, yeah that's an edge case. It's an edge no, but that happens. Yeah, so they would be marked with a tie. The question is, so that you, you want to distinguish between somebody winning, you know, leading to win, yeah. and leading and, and, you know, 
going to run well, this, this is why I was saying, like, the, the thing I suggested doesn't handle what you said. Yeah. But, but for that one, it's, you, you could have either one or two people leading, and then the code would either be elected or advanced to runoff, depending on whether they met the threshold. No. Well, okay, so, so I was originally thinking you have elected, leading, runoff, tie, and then nothing for losing. Yeah, well. Or, and, or eliminated for well, I was, an I was, extra elimination. I was saying there'd be a, a single list of counter names called leading. And then, and then you'd have a separate single code to say what does the list of leading represent. And it can be either advances to runoff, elected, or um, you actually are at the uh, uh, So well, okay, elected. That's easy. Advances to run up. So we have a status of the contest, right? Yeah, the status Advanced to run. Right? The status of the leading candidates, basically. So so we could say like final, uh, yeah. advance to rush to uh, to run off, and then we would just want to say like preliminary or something. Yeah, you could have a. You could. Well, that could be. Or. Separate or something. No, but we could have a like contest results status saying. Yeah. You know. But I mean, uh, uh, well, actually, but you need to distinguish between the case even what leading means if it's if it's to run off. Well, but I mean, you could you could work it out. You could work it out. I mean, we have to decide right now. But um, or, yeah. or are we just saying like you can do it for a candidate, right? Because then you you're you're protected against it being different in the future. Well, I guess I would suggest leading and leading to runoff as two separate codes. Mm -hmm. Because well, you might want to display them differently somehow, you know. It's well, I mean, I was, I was saying leading is not a code, it's just a list of candidates. Oh, I thought it was just a property of a candidate. In the, well, in like case. if you, normally what most results, you uh, mark the ones that are winning based on the current results tabulated so far. Um, the, well, check, the check mark. Yeah, I, I mean, in the in the JSON, in the like, contest status JSON format, we have, like, you know, you have a list of choices, and each have an ID, a valid title, and numbers of votes. Right, um, but we so don't that. have a winning status yet in the... No, but I, I, would say, I was saying you would put it in that for each candidate. Right. Rather than having the, the list that's going with the contest. Um, and then you can have, for a candidate, differences between what kind of leading they are, and then you can handle size, um, and it's also easier for me because otherwise you're still going to have to transform whatever else you have into this. Well, no, in that, order that, that'll, be done, that'll be done by the template. That'll be done right. by the Python code. So, yeah, 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 but like... So we just have to come up with so our own semantics for that. I, I, think, I think the problem with doing it for Canada though is that it doesn't support multi-value tags. Like, you might want to say they're winning and they advance to the runoff. You know, it's like... Well, I guess that would be like, what kind of winning are they? Oh, so you're saying... Well, you, you basically have three... You have three... Based on results so far, you, yeah. you you have either winning, two runoff, or tie, or or mm -hmm. are defeated, or yeah. not not winning. Yeah, it's four different. And then, then there's a matter of whether the results are fine final or preliminary. Or preliminary. And that is what was the contest. That's fine. But yeah, but like the win status or the win type, including eliminated or defeated, including not. Uh, I think that could be a. I think okay, I this, be better this, for this one. Anyway, um, getting back out of that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to visually represent that, but um, the data is not there, and I, I tried to just like add a winner true field, mm -hmm. um, and I tried to like Carl call my way through the Python code and didn't get anywhere. Um, so if you guys figure out how to do that, it would be great, and then let me know what you've done, and I can visually represent yeah, that. Yeah, it, it'll be um, pretty soon. Other, thi other things that I was missing in data models were. Um, relatedly, the leading candidate in each RCV RAM, because the city's current output makes that uh, high less happen. So the, the person who wins an RCV contest might not be leading in the first round or even the fifth round, right? Um, you want to indicate the leader in each round? The leader in each round, because that's what the, um, I don't personally care about it that much, but the city's output does it, and I would like to have at least future parity with their. Uh, How does output. the city demonstrate that? Uh, let me grab the. 
uh, results. And I'll keep talking in the meantime. Other things that, um, that the data model didn't distinguish between was maybe there's a, maybe it distinguishes somewhere, but the code that I was working off of in a template uh, didn't distinguish between real candidates, sauce choices, and like metadata like um, you know the number of yeah. registered voters or whatever. Um, at least not in the detailed report page. Uh, the loop that's like looped over it all at once. At once. Um, I want to mark those differently, but in, I think in the summary results it does work that way, and the other one it doesn't work. Like in the way where it's lined out, this uh, horizontally it doesn't distinguish. Mm -hmm. I forget exactly where, but like that's a distinction that I need to be able to know to color them differently or to do uh, different treatment. Um, uh, and the same is true for in the detailed overview. You have like a list of precincts and a list of districts and a list of neighborhoods and like at the top you have the full results. Um, the the loop the, the loop that iterates over the data model pulling all those things out also does not have a distinction that I could see between whether something is a precinct or an aggregation of precincts and what kind of aggregation of precincts it is. Um, and that's also like you know I I would like to do something as simple as like draw a double line between like when you go from precincts to other aggregations of precincts and I can't do that right now because I don't. Yeah. So actually, there's a there's a classification in area code. Okay. Yeah, there might be something to do with this. Um, but um, I I have I need to do the classification of districts. But I do. I'm now converting all the district yeah. data. I should also write up some of these questions and send them to one of you. Um, so so those are some of these things are probably available in the data model. So Couple of reactions. Like one is, um, have you seen this demo repo yet? Probably not. So, um, can you go to it right now? Yeah. And I, I found the thing that you asked for. Real quick. Um, this is the supposedly results demo repo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there. So one thing you can do is. I think it would be good to store the um, rendered output in this repository. Okay. And you might even, I would try to work it so, um, I think it's documented pretty well, but I would store the CSS files in the demo repo. Okay. And then render render the um, output in, to the, um, the GH pages so then you can just browse to it. Okay, I see. Yeah, okay. I see what you want to do. Um, I think that the CSS file should live in the results report repo, not in the demo repo. Oh, yeah. but, um, but the demo repo also has a sub-module pointing to the results report repo. So actually one of the things I'd like to discuss with you is kind of trying to figure out our directory structure, what it should be for everything because you know, you might want to keep the well, just also how you run it and like which reads from what. And well, so so here's the thing. Like, I feel like the presentation specific stuff should not be in the results report because, like, um, like we don't want the 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 test expectation to be reflecting like stylistic changes. It's more just. Um, I mean, that's. That's sort of theoretically true, but in practice, you end up having to change the HTML to make sales and changes as well. Not always, but um, at least for now, I'm going yeah, to, for now, for now. I'm going for to now. definitely have to do that because there's like no, no class in anything, right? Yeah, for now. Maybe no. in the future you can do that. But so also, we want to run this on real data, not well, our debug data. Well, that's the other thing. So I think so. My suggestion to you is number one. Render what you already have and start in the sample data. Yeah. So you can, and then the other thing is run the exact same template on Carl's real data. Right. Well, you want actually that's what we want to make the yeah that's not testing on uh, so it so you have a realistic. Uh, and then and then the demo repo is structured so you can have like you can the top level page links to like here's the the minimal test here's the June auction here's the. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, with um, so uh, then you don't have the real data yet, ready yet, do you? Uh, not quite. Okay. Uh, maybe a few more days, so forth. But um, 
So, like, what do we want to put in the demo area? Do we want to copy, like, there'll be like several subdirectories for dates and stuff in the, well, here's, in the sample data. Here's, then do we want to like just copy an excerpt of one to put it in the demo? Well, here's what I would suggest. I would suggest adding the, the sample data repository as a submodule of the demo repo. Mm. And then mm. add a script to the demo repo that basically just hard codes this relative paths to the input okay. files. And then that way you could just update the sample data we put to get the newer data and then just rerun the yeah. script. That's and then idea. store the output in the demo repository. Okay, so, so the sample data would only contain converted sample data and all the... It would only contain the input files to the results yeah. report. And then the, the demo repo would store the output. And you wouldn't need to copy any data. And then, and then in, throughout this process, the results reporter repo doesn't change at all. Unless we need to. Yeah. So would we then generate multiple dates? Yeah, I think the demo repo should store, should have like the, it has the minimal test now, it can have the June mm -hmm. election, the November election. Okay. And then, uh, I mean, I also have data for 2016, yeah, but I don't know if we need to. We'll just be clicking a button if it, everything works. I think I don't have the omni ballot data for. 2016. Yeah. Um, so, so the thing that's starting to get hard though is that it's like it's going to be harder for us to kind of like work independently mm -hmm. now. And one of the um, one of the things I was thinking about is like maybe if we could like decide at a meeting like we want to do these things. Yeah. And that way, if we're working on them outside the meeting, it's not like we're making decisions. Yeah. It's just we're like, making like I just, I just rattle off like a bunch of requests to YouTube for. Yeah, YouTube and I thought maybe we could even use like the issues for the repo just right. say like that way. That way, these are things we agreed to at the meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Because um, like the thing about like adding the winner, it's like, you know, it's like. Do I do that or do you do that or like do you? Well, do that? It's like I I try to not know where. So <laughs> ideally, one of you two either does it or should do it. But um, so, but the intent was to have it there. It just was right. Uh, but then, like when it's ready, we need to like talk to you to tell you. Well, you need to yeah, you need to tell me how it works. Or I guess I can just look at the repo and see. Right? Yeah. So, I, but you need to at least notify me that it has been done, and then I can look at the repo and see. Well, what you get. yeah, and there's like a few minor tweaks that we have to do because so, I changed the. So I don't know, I mean maybe one idea would be to like maybe at this meeting we can just like list out like six things and then maybe someone could just make an issue for like make the dot winner work. Right. Like, um, what are the other the thing about the pieces? Uh, yes. Uh, I since I'm the requester of all these stuff, I can write them up with issues. Um, so can we just maybe vote to let Rowan give authorize him to make these issues? Oh, yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay. So to review, the things that I will request are um, some sort of winner, a winner status or something like it. It looks like, it sounds like you have a more elaborate idea for how to do it, which uh, find whatever, do, do whatever you guys want, as long as I can tell who wants something. Um, and then uh, the leading candidate in each RSV round as well. Uh, and I was going to show you how that works in the cities. <coughs> Uh, the results, which is this, it's kind of hard to see but because of the green background, but um, the red color is the candidate getting eliminated. Oh, um, it is yeah. hard to see. And the blue color is kind of hard to see in the green background. Okay. This is the person leading, and then at this point, in this round, this person jumps in the lead. Uh, and it's not great. The blue background is not that clear. Okay, the blue color is not clear, so you can't really see it that well, but it does show to the closely that at this point, this person jumps in the lead, and then the winner is happy with this which also. So, do, but uh, I think in your demo you sorted by popularity, right? Yeah, that was it. So the, the elimination is also in the bottom. Which is too. also what David carries. Well, yeah. 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 yeah, Chris implemented that with cool. David's request, yeah. By the way, um, the, the, the Travis test failed. Who knows the it? No, right. 
that I think there was an issue with the cache of the PDF file. So you might want to look into that. Oh, okay. I, I ran the script. I didn't actually try that. So I, don't, I was kind of curious. It might have failed with my first commit, but then hopefully it should have fixed itself on a second commit. But oh, did you? Did you? Uh, I pushed something, and then I was like, oh crap! I was supposed to rerun the thing, and then I regretted oh. it. Um, so maybe you can look. Maybe you can file that as an issue, like troubleshoot the Travis Sky uh, issue. Yeah. Um, so uh, issues. So I need a winner. Uh, attributes. Uh, leading candidate in each RCB round. Um, I'm going to ask for, I need to review what I exactly am asking for, but some, I, I noticed for myself I made a distinction between um, real candidates or choices and metadata like the number of registered voters and the number of the cost of ballots. Um, um, and, then, and then if you want to make an issue for the putting those things in the demo repo, the June. Oh, yeah. Number, um, put June. Yeah, actually, so I want to just. Just pause for a second and do a meta ish meta. Yeah. Like Tony, um, are you okay with us talking about this stuff, even mm -hmm. though you're not involved? Or yeah, sure. Okay. 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 It's the last item. To yeah, the we're. I don't think we'll be going too much longer. Yeah, I have a couple issues I wanted to discuss okay. too. When. Um, okay, so my list now is winning candidate, leading candidate each round. Distinction between real candidates and metadata, distinction between precincts and various types of aggregation of precincts. Um, put the June and November results in the demo repo and like kind of script built from them. Okay, can I make a request too? Yes. So someone had pointed out we don't right now San Francisco reports voter turnout based on percentage of registered voters, mm. but we don't list eligible voters. Uh huh? We don't list What's the difference between a registered voter and an eligible voter? Well, an eligible voter can be someone who is eligible but is not registered. But that's not a number that the department Oh, we don't have that. No, the Secretary of State's office has estimates. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But okay, we, could, we could at least have a countywide, as part of our results report, a countywide voter turnout as a percentage of eligible voters. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you see this often. This is, <coughs> When they say 74 percent of the people in San Francisco yes. voted. Yeah. Oh, we could also. Have but it's more like team. it's more like 56 percent or something. Right, because because there were 74 percent of the registered voters showed up, but if you count all these people who who so, did, so who this are is based on demographics, like census yep. data, yep. and yep. they have like estimates of the estimates or well, the Secretary of State's office has like by county. They have like a 30-day estimate, a 15-day estimate. Interesting. Yeah, I can I can give you the link for that. So actually, the topic I wanted to discuss was uh, similar. Oh. So. Uh, well, let's just. Skip. Are you done now? Or? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I I want to really quickly point out that the um, the Department of Elections website, uh, the current one, turns out to have sortable tables. You can click any header in their tables, and it will sort by that table by that. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, the thing is, they're also trying to draw arrows to indicate the direction of what you're sorting and the direction oh, you're of. But the CSS being the arrows is broken, and so nothing appears. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're Okay. Um, I don't know how useful that is. Okay. No. Okay. So then. Okay. But that was the only thing on my notes doc that I had come to. Okay. But uh, we could, uh, if you if you can send me a link to the oh, okay. raw data, oh. then I can. Uh, we can at least put it in the JSON yeah, exactly, file exactly. Uh, for overall exactly. um, county yes. stats. I'm not sure if I added that or not. I think we were talking about having some sort of. Yeah, so yeah, what did you want to? So, so um, in the original demo, I had uh, ballots cast. Mm. I had ballots rejected, ballots uncounted, and total votes. Well, and then there's undervotes and overvotes and all that stuff. So the total votes is the sum of, um, like, all, uh, I guess, all the valid votes that you compute a candidate percentage rate 
and then you have undervotes and overvotes. But then, and then you want to reconcile that with ballots cast. So I have no data. So originally I was thinking uncounted ballots were ballots that were received, but yet not, not yet processed. But I don't have any data on that. So maybe we should throw it out. Right, well, I, was, I would also say if it doesn't appear in. It doesn't exist, so it'd be always zero. So yeah, it would always exist. So, uh, so I was going to take that up. But then I found out that. Uh, By the way, I haven't looked into the Board of Education discrepancies. I haven't been able to have time to review your emails. Yeah, uh, that's fine. So, uh, but I mean, nothing's really changed except mm -hmm. I figured everything out. Um, so one, I was able to determine that overvotes means the number of eligible votes lost due to an overvoted ballot. It's, it's, it's the number of actual votes that were lost, not the number of ballots that were overvoted. Okay, so there's no discrepancy now? Well, there's still okay. an... So, so, oh, so yeah, I yes. wonder was sure. what, what's the semantics of overvote. So I thought yeah. what it means for San Francisco. So when, there's, when you can vote for three, each overvoted ballot counts for three overvotes, yes. and the number of overvotes is always a multiple of three for that contest, yeah. no matter which precinct. And if you if you hand in a blank ballot, it's three hundred votes. If you if you only choose right. one person, it's two hundred votes and a vote for the candidate. Right. So the number of votes. And always if you vote adds for four, up. then it's three overvotes. Because yes. like, then the number of votes always adds up to three times the number of ballots. Right. See, my I, I actually if we're going to use the word the phrase total votes to refer to the total number of votes for candidates, which I, I, I agree with. I don't think we should call over votes and under votes votes because that's what they're called. Now. Unfortunately that is a terminology. <laughs> well, no, 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 I no, I agree. no, 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 because we, we can report a different value. Like instead of reporting the over votes that you just defined, we could say overvoted ballots. Yes, we can compute that by dividing the number by the number. Yeah, but then I think it would be but see, I don't. It's I, to me, it's confusing if we say total votes, and then we have another category of votes that's not included in the total. It's yeah. No, I understand that, but like the number of undervotes, you're not going to be able to compute the number of undervoted ballots. No, they, they report that. So, so total yeah. votes means total valid votes. An undervoter or overvote is not a no, valid no. vote. Yeah. Oh, so you, you would want to call it total valid votes? Well, you could. It's just a long word. But that's the semantics. Yeah. So and it's also the number that you use. If you say this, the candidate gets fifty-one percent or forty-nine percent. That percentage is from that total yeah, number. Yeah, percentage of valid votes, not. And usually, though, that's the way they kind of report it. Yes. But there's when you get down to ballot ballots cast, there's a discrepancy. You know, one is because they're using the ballots cast as I think a particular ballot, the count of particular yeah. ballot cards. Yeah. So you have a discrepancy between uh, the, the ballots cast are the same for um, governor usually. For governor as for uh, city proposition. But, the, but more people apparently turned in the yep. city proposition page well, than turned in the governor page. No, usually what happens is the, uh, what will happen is uh, this, these discrepancies, I think, should not really be, uh, exist in the final results. But they might exist in preliminary results. No, they, no. they are. in the finals, really? Yes. That's disturbing. I don't know how that happens. Well, well one is because they turn in different amount of cards, and the ballots cast is always set for, for precinct. Mm -hmm. So it's independent of that. It's not the cards cast. It's the. But how does it happen? Do people like mail back like only one card? Or yeah, yes. Like, yeah. So in fact, you'll find that. Uh, well, there's a big difference in discrepancies from June to November, and and not, I have a snapshot also. Um, and it, and there's a big difference between mail ballots. So. The thing is, sometimes the discrepancy is because people don't turn in the card, and other times it's because they've cast a ballot and it's been rejected. Like, like there's a separate table that I found oh. that goes for the whole county. It says like how many like mail ballots have been submitted, like how many have been rejected, that's, like what's that's the reason? Kind of in the ballots cast total. 
I believe so because you'll see like it's you'll see like a lot more mail ballots have you know a different discrepancy. Oh, so I think I think so. You know, when they decide to accept an amendment, vote in the envelope, right? They separate the envelope and the ballots. So then, if I like put my name or my signature on a card too, then someone is eventually going to find that mark and disqualify my ballot over it. But my card one, three, and four is still going to be counted because you can't track those out anymore. You can't throw. And them. that shows up as a ballot cast. And that. Um, well, also, card. I mean, it's it's actually kind of interesting that like they'll like you'll say these mail ballots were received, but like. Some were without a signature, in which yeah. case they have to they call you and ask you. Mm -hmm. oh, well, you sign always have a complete signature. And then they'll say, "Oh, it's been uh, it was received or postmarked after the deadline." Well, I think if the if the envelope itself wasn't eligible, I think that doesn't yeah it disqualifies. It's not showing yeah. up in the statement. So then you wouldn't that wouldn't result in a, in a discrepancy between card ones and card twos. No, but it results in a discrepancy between ballots cast okay, yeah. and uh, ballots counted. Mm -hmm. So originally, my interpretation of this field was the number that were actually the difference between those cast and those counted. Right. But it's actually but now there's another discrepancy. So I want. So what I have is is a number that's like an adjustment, but I don't know what to call it. Like I, I called it rejected because I used to have uncounted and rejected. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll ask the director. I need, that's why I wanted to. I needed to review your last emails because I could just ask him. But we'll, we'll, we'll know right away the answer. So, well, so the question is: in our statistic, we we have a number that the city is not using or reporting. But and and I can compute it, but I don't know what to call it. Or and, well, the other question is, you don't know what it means because you don't know what it means. So the other question is, does he have number of ballots either remaining to be uncounted or rejected by precinct? There's a number by by there's a number that's by county, but not okay. by precinct. And then there's the issue of, do they distinguish between cards cast? Like, do they have a discrepancy? Do they have data well, yeah, on, so, yeah. on the on like cards cast versus? Well, so I mean, I, I can either I can either read your last emails and try to pick out the four or five questions, or you could just send me the four or five questions and I can just ask. Okay, it's probably better than trying to rehash my emails, which were originally written because they were already started figuring yeah, it all out, and now I figured it all out. So. Okay, so going back to the issues. But do you have an, if we only have one number that's an adjustment, like mm -hmm. should we call it adjustment instead of uncounted? Well, no, it's kind of unique. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, so going back to the issues, list, do we have any more that we want to find? Um, so the ones that I wrote. Well, down so one was thing was David Carrion's samples. He had like bars, like that showed. It was um, relative to the the leading candidate. I think the green bars are just alternating. No, no, no. They're. Um, oh, uh, you mean these these yeah. bars? That would be really. Oh, cool. yeah, I can, I can. So, so I, I okay. so in the in the demo. You can you do that with the, HTML or CSS? You can do that in pure CSS. Okay. Um, what? Yeah, yeah. You can. You can draw these bars in CSS. Yeah. No, but you need a a number. Yeah, but you can put that in data attributes, and CSS can do things based on attributes. Um, oh, okay. There's, uh, there's so you can put a, the number in an attribute. Yeah, and then can you, you can do you can read the attribute and do math on it in CSS. Oh. Well, you can even do the with the style in the HTML. Yeah, but I might as well do it in both. Okay. But anyway, so uh, the, the bars. I guess the bars the, was, Ron, the thing about well. Um, Yeah. The thing I was getting at before is, like, if there comes a point where you're like doing a lot of fancy stuff in the HTML, it mm -hmm. might be better to start doing it in a different repo. But I think, if um, I think for for now it's fine. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, I guess I announced it in the email, but I did put together a, a page that has a list of. Uh, results data from a lot of the counties, and I tried to. If they all have the same style, I just used, you know, I only reported it once. 
No. So you can go to that um, page and you can click on links to, if you want ideas on like, different ways of you know how things look or um, it's is, just an easy way to click to. Is that in the repo? Yeah, what in the sample data repo. Okay. I, I sh actually I should have added your email to the, the Genetech it. Yeah. Because it's in the binder. Is it in the public binder? Yeah. No. My email. No, 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 in this binder. It's a different. No, I don't think I got a copy. Okay. No. Okay. Um, that reminds me, I have another feature request for, for you all. Um, it might be in the back end already somewhere, but it's not in the in the template that I can figure out. I, I didn't really look very deeply, but I didn't figure out how to produce it. Um, metadata like number of continuing votes, number of exhaustive votes. For yeah, well, that's not in there yet. Okay, that's not in there yet. Then that's and actually, the well, it's in the data. Well, no, and I'm saying it's not reflected. It's not in your data. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so that's another feature. Well, continuing votes is actually the same number as the vote total. Yes. Um, the yeah, there's no need to show that because it's redundant. Well, number of exhausted votes is yeah, that's I guess computable, but it's it, yeah, that's not in there. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's in the data loaded. You yeah. just have to yeah. uh, put it in the template, so it's it's not a not a big deal. Yeah. So also one thing about my uh, I put together a list of other you know, counties with sample data. And there's two commercial services, Clarity and Live Voter Turnout. They're kind of in compet In a sense, they're in competition with the OR because they're you know, providing the same water. So one of the things that I did was I also wrote down like, how long it took the pages to load and how much data was loaded. So the longest was uh, 21 seconds. And I think it loaded six megabytes of data. With the browser or with the? What? With the browser? Or? Oh, that's the time the browser page load finished. 20 seconds? 20 seconds. Okay. And I have a, a 6 megabit DSL, so it's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And so the, I guess it was 6 megabytes, but only 2 or 3 megabytes transferred. You know, And then the shortest was like less than a second with like uh, yeah. less than 50k bytes. Yeah, but that's, that's really... Um Old, old stuff. I mean, uh, the cable systems do 100 to 200 down. No, but the problem the problem isn't the transfer speed. The problem yeah, it's, it's the rendering. No, it's the whole round trip time. Yeah. So you're maybe you're doing thought. You know, people just load up all kinds of crap JavaScript. Well, yeah. You also have like you also get situations where you, like you send. You request something, and then when it comes back, it tells you to request something else. Right, right, right. right. Too, many, too many hops. Back so, so one there. of the causes, uh, like several uh, counties, you know, one of the reasons with uh, huge amounts of data transfer, they had a high resolution, like 3,000 pixel county logo that they shrunk down to 100 pixels. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like almost all the, you know, for one county, almost all of it was their logo. And um, like another county, they had a, another high resolution background image just in the background that they put a white page on. And so that's we what took like. Add that to the issues, add a large background image. Three megabytes <laughs> background image. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, one of the issues is like you find just typical county websites, they have really make really stupid mistakes. All, even healthcare.gov, when it first came out, you know, they, their multi-million dollar designer. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest, I mean, they were downloading three megabytes of stuff just for a form, and it's all generated with JavaScript. You know, there's no actual form, but they had a background image that was this nebulous, green, weird stuff. And it was like two megabytes <laughs> just for, which you, you know, could with like one line of CSS, and so then you're creating it, for example. Well, yeah, but the point is they didn't store the, the file correctly, so it was right. so ridiculously huge. Yeah, you can compress it. That, so yeah. how could people on a no, you I, know, I wonder if a million dollar contract make a mistake like that? Do you, do you think we should have like a subcommittee or like a working meeting where we just kind of we can like code for a couple hours or? Uh, that would be cool. Yeah. We can offer it. No, so can can publicly so we can, we can, we can. All we have to do is uh, announce it. Yeah. And, and yeah. say when it is. Um, oh, I think. Well, we can we can 
I mean, it doesn't have to be super detailed, but... Yeah. Oh, we can just say what we did. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking ahead, because... Yeah, this is only an escalate. I know, and, and also, um, I feel bad for Tony, because... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not doing um, let's let's do that, but like in the new year, because yes. I turn into a pumpkin in like a week. Yeah. But maybe we, we can be just the two. Of yes, us. not a quorum, and uh, and yeah. start to play with some of this data and get it sorted out. Yeah. So then, um, okay. Okay. So. Um, then uh, let's review the list of issues that. Um, we are agreeing to the file. Um, winner is a candidate. So you know you don't actually have to file it as an issue if you don't want to. No, we're, we're, we're just going to, it's just going to be easier because it'll be public and then. All right, that's fine. Yeah, and so Chris wanted me to do this, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so, well, I can write a response to Alligator or something. Yeah. Winner is a candidate, actually. And like issues and file that you can close once you've done the work. Yeah, let's, okay. not, let's not, don't discuss the issues on the issue, just we'll, we'll close it when it's done. Just say, like, this is done now. Um, yeah, and, and like, you know, like here's how I did that. Yeah. Um, winner is a candidate attribute, however, that takes shape. Um, leading candidate each RCP round. Um, metadata per RCP round. Uh, distinction between real uh, candidates. What's metadata? Number like of exhaustive results. votes, exhaustive over votes, continuing votes. Oh. Uh, oh. The, well, they're, they're called results, the statistics in our terminal. Oh, results statistics. Gotcha. It, and it's, it's already there. Why? So. I mean, no, it's just not. It's not in the template. Oh, in the template. Well, he's, he's going to be typing this up. Yeah, okay. So, okay. result stats for RCP round. Um, distinction between real choices versus result stats in one of the templates. I need to look at the code and see exactly what I meant by that, but it, you get it all figured out or I'll find an issue. Um, distinction between precincts and aggregations of precincts, and also what kind of aggregation, and district, and neighborhood, uh, and the everything aggregation. Um, put the June and November uh, election data in a demo repo and a script to build those reports. Uh, turn out that, that one, so Yeah, uh, yeah. Bill, let me take it down. And then you're going to file these issues in the re 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 appropriate repo? Um, yes. Okay. Um, uh, add uh, data repo as a sub module. And so that issue goes into the demo repo. Yeah. The other issues, I think, all go into the. And then update form. the test minimal, the minimal test in the demo repo too. For what? To reflect the latest changes. Oh yeah, yeah. I asked you. That. Sorry. Should we change the names of the candidates in the minimal test? It's fine. Let's just do it for now. All right. Because mm -hmm. he said, oh, it's wrong because the. the What's the test? It doesn't. Yeah. We could put a. Well, warning. we'll have the real results. Yeah. We could put a warning in the services to me up. Yeah, so, <laughs> put June and November results in demo repo and add a script to build those reports, add data report, and also add data rep repo to some modules of the demo repo to the demo repo, um, and also in the demo repo, a separate issue, um, update the minimal test in the demo repo for my changes. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, display turnout as a percentage of eligible voters based on per county secretary of state data, which Chris will obtain, um, which I might split into two issues, which yeah, is. Get the data. I, I, we probably won't be able to implement this soon because okay. it's fine. Just the issues considered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think I'll split into two issues: one to get the data in somewhere, and then one to actually. Yeah. So this is the OR. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everything is OR unless otherwise okay. uh, stated. Um, an issue to remove the uncounted ballots thing because it's always zero. So, actually, I think I'm going to change my rejected ballots. Call it uncounted. Okay. So, well, then we're, we're still deleting something. Adding yes. eligible voters is going to be, that's an issue on the sample data repo. Uh, um, what are those? Is oh, adding, okay. Sample, yeah. But I don't think we have eligible by precinct, do we? Well, whatever is available. I think I'm just the Unless the Department of Elections has it. No, I'm saying, but something's available in the Secretary of State, so it might only be the countywide total, but it's it's a number we could add to the JSON. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then we have. Add number of eligible voters based on per county sector of state data that's in the sample data repo. Um, show turnout as a percentage of eligible voters, it's in the ROR repo. Remove um, uncounted ballots, which is always zero, or do whatever other cleanup you need to do. Yeah. Um, 
And that's in the OR repo as well. And then add bars whose width indicates the percentage as reflected in the data carries PDF, and that's also an OR repo. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all I got. So actually, the, the way it's set up is the election definition tells you which data fields are available. So normally, you want to just iterate over those in, in a template. Mm -hmm. So depending on what contest it is and what kind of election and how it's configured. Oh, for results stats, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, that's fine. Um, no, I mean, it's not. That's how it works currently, too. Well, I'm not sure what's in the template. Yeah, I mean, it's, I could have, I might have made a tag that looks like a higher level thing that he uses that might. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the templates work like that right now, uh, or at least some of the templates like iterate over all the uh, choices and then iterate over all the results stats. Mm -hmm. So they don't hard code which results stats exist, but they just iterate over a right. of them. But then there's other templates that use different ways of getting at the data that iterate only over an aggregation of those two, and I wasn't able to find a way to Yeah, like in the RCV, we're, we're sorting the candidates prior to, we want to separate, treat those differently from right. the other ones, so. Yeah, did, no, did you we'll, also, uh, we'll, we'll figure this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. so did you write a sort algorithm that yeah. used the, yeah. that used the, the last RCV? Yeah. yeah. Instead of the. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you can see it. That's what I did before the last Oh, OK. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 I think we had one, but it was on the, the normal results, not the RCV. Yeah. Oh, which it's yeah, really has the match. first choice. Yeah, this in the in the mayor's race, which is the example that we use, it happens to match. Okay. There's um, no one over to each other. Is there anything else? The other thing too, this is like a larger issue, but we're eventually going to need translations for every English phrase that occurs. Somewhere. Yes. Um, so and we might need to scrounge around for these translations. Or we could use Google as a well, first but I mean, step. but I mean, it's better to use the city's official sample bell. They have some. Yeah. Well, we have all the sample, all the trick, all the stuff in the sample ballots are in the election definition file. So can you make, maybe make make a issue to the sample data repo just saying um, add. This is kind of an ongoing thing, but like add a file of translations for all phrases. So there's some of the districts. Uh, there's many, there's going to be many things. Like we have s translations for some, but maybe not all. Yeah. And like things like the names of our results, stats, the headings, we, we don't have those because mm -hmm. they're not in the ballot. No, but the, um, the results on the SF website, I think, are also public. Yeah, so do, they, do they have what? headings in the, in the what? Uh, what, if you go to the results, does it have like translations for undervote and overvote? Yeah, I actually told him before the election he fixed it. So oh, so they have it now? Out, yeah, I pointed out all the English phrases. Yeah, no, it's, it, it has it. So it has, so in Spanish, because it's a language I can read, it has translations for things like vote by mail, election day, or uh, vote so or vote. Um, so does the election department have a translation table? Yeah. No. We need to construct it. We need to like scan the, download the web page and then match up the columns. Exactly. Or just manually. I mean, there's a, there's a finite number. It's going to be. They have terms for undervote and overvote. I would say we should just make a YAML file. Of, like it's going to have like 40 phrases or. I mean, we, yeah, it's we something to work on over time. But yeah. Well, one of the things I was going to do is extract out all the translations okay. from the ballots and store it as a separate okay. table. Maybe just make it as a meta issue or something. Yeah, like a meta issue. Um, but I mean, yeah, we should have a, a, we should have that. Okay. Uh, so, do you want to? Can we just? Should we just vote to approve these as issues? Yeah, issues that. That seems fine. Yeah, I'll move. I'll move that we authorize Rowan to um, add these as issues to the repos as we've discussed. Uh, I second it sounds fine, but do we have to approve it before you, you actually well, can create an issue? I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because, well, maybe I should amend my, I, I, I'm saying that I think that moving that he creates his issue and that we as a committee agree that we want to do these things. Ah, okay. Because the reason is I, that... I second that, that uh, motion. And, and, okay. Your revised motion. 
I, I understand. The other thing is, I think it would be good for us to file issues outside of meetings because that sort of triggers a discussion about a new topic. You know, and this so, is a bug report or something. Right, I guess so. Yeah. Um, anyways, so Secretary Chambers, did we take public comment on this item yet? No. Okay, so open up to public comment, seeing the to the public. Um, further, is there any discussion on the motion before we take a vote? Seeing none, Secretary Chan? Uh, Chair Dudai. Yes. Dudai, yes. Uh, Member Haig? Yes. Haig, yes. Member Catal? Yes. Catal, yes. Member Wasserman? Yes. Wasserman, yes. You have uh, four votes uh, and uh, that motion passes. Okay, great. Thank you, Member Catal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All right, so. Um, we could probably keep discussing this much, much longer. I think we've got it. Yeah, I think we've got, got it. Enough. I mean, we might have a bunch of work for ourselves to do, right? So yeah. I think that's that's a pretty good um, action items are a pretty good item for me. And I think that it, when it comes to like working on these tasks, they're they're sort of more administrative at this point, just implementing what we've already decided. Mm -hmm. So. Um, is there anything else on this item before we move on? I know Brandon, oh shoot. Well, Brandon said he's working on something. Oh, I know what it is, and I can just give you a, yeah, um, a recap. Yeah. So uh, one of the things in open count is uh, trying to find where the targets are, you know, on the, well, basically they, they'll scan a ballot, and then they use that ballot image to figure out where the mark targets are. And it used some weird algorithm. So I think Brandon was interested in, in using uh, machine learning to. Is it a reference blank ballot or is it just from scratch by itself? Uh, well, Open Count uses you know some subset of the marked ballots. No, but I mean, does it inspect a ballot without? Does it tell you where the marks are without having the blank ballots referred to? You can have. You can use a, a filled up. A marked ballot, not a blank ballot. So you don't need to give it a reference blank ballot. Well, it's better if you do. Oh, so it doesn't need one. Off. Open count doesn't. Okay. But then it, it you know, if, if it's marked, then it might miss it, which is one of the problems. Okay. I mean, I can see how in theory you would need it because there are going to be the most ballots are not going to have a mark on place. Only yeah. some of them. Most what? Most ballots, like for any given mark. Most ballots are not going to have that mark. But maybe 90% of people you, vote for, you know, what Yeah, unless it's like Proposition 6 or... Uh, but even when you mark it, it still can find it. Okay. But, so open count solution is you manually go in and yeah. fix it. I mean, I guess the... My, 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 more accurately stating my point is like, in most, in most cases there will be plenty of ballots where like, a given place is either marked or not marked, and you can... Even if you don't have a blank, you can sort of figure out what the blank is. Well, like, but what, if, but what if there's like what are the what do you call the tiny marks? Like what if there's like black squares on the ballot? Oh um, if, if if someone makes a perfect black square, how is open count gonna know that's well I mean open count was designed for audits, which is a little bit different than you know, they're just saying they, they're given a pile of scans and you know they they don't they don't have a scan of a blank ballot. But I'm, but I'm right. saying, but how, like, even theoretically, how can you, how can a machine without giving a blank ballot distinguish between, like, a black rectangle that's on the original ballot versus, like, a black rectangle that someone draws? Well, because you would also will be looking at other thousands of other ballots that don't have a black rectangle. Well. Oh, so you I do need to. I, I'm, oh, speculating I that, I'm speculating that you most people don't draw blank. Like, yeah. yeah. So it's it requires other ballots. Yeah, ballots. yeah, I'm speculating that that's a few. Well, you, 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 you can do one or you can do multiple. Okay. Oh, so you're saying that you can look up, you look at all. The, I'm saying that in theory, if you look at all the ballots, then you could. I, I see how in theory you could do this well. But most people don't just draw marks that look like a mark target. Well, no, I mean, you could draw, I mean, San Francisco is just a line. I mean, right? Yeah, no, so what you have are the, the borders of the arrow, you know, is always the same. And then there's some other marks on top of that. 
so but it can recognize the the edges of that border in most cases. So so Brandon was looking at using TensorFlow so, or something to uh, to does this work? How do you how do you tie it back to the Canon name? Uh, in open, well, one of the problems in open count is it uses OCR to recognize the candidate name, and then it just it associates the mark target with the closest candidate name. So, what does it use? Is there a definition file that's going to use? Or? Well, you go into this interactive application. No, I'm saying with clip. Brandon's work, not with the Oh, account. I think he was just going to use TensorFlow to match the, to find where the targets are. Like, he, you can use machine learning to identify a, an apple or a, you know, a, yeah, so, so a, you're a person's you're face. So he's going to, he would want to see if he could use that software right, to, just find, to find the arrows. Yeah, to find the arrows. So that's not the full, it's no. not, okay. But that's it's a step. Yep. And I think that's what you do. But I, I also didn't fully comprehend what you use. Well, at least that's my understanding of what. Well, I wasn't sure if he was using TensorFlow to like construct an election definition file. No, I I think he's only looking at it to okay. find mark targets, and I think in the unmarked ballots, not in. Uh, but that, there's another question is. Do you use machine learning to train it to identify marks, or do you use a uh, number of pixels crossed out or something like that? Yeah, well, as long as, yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, what else? Oh, and then I should also say, um, the Brent Turner wanted me to say, this might not be the appropriate item for this, but he wanted me to say that, or actually it is. But he feels that the election management system should also be open source, not just mm -hmm. the voting system. So I agree with him, yeah. but um, I think we also talked about the Scopus project yeah. like more than a year ago. So, and, yeah. so what? well, originally when I first posted, I called it OEMS, <laughs> and and then and then Chris said, "Oh no, that's too ambitious." Like that's that's so so I stopped calling it. That's, that's but I still have it. If I get reappointed to the commission, we can start that after my second term ends. <laughs> when we're all here about five years from now. So, um, celebrating the, the well, fact that yeah. open voting system. So actually, I was working on open EMS. Oh. Even from before. Okay. Still? Well, I haven't okay. done too much work on it. And also related to the VIP mm. data. Okay, um, so anything else in this item before we move on? No, seeing none. Uh, let's move on. To the next item one. 9, topic for future discussion. Discussion of possible action regarding topic for future discussion. Okay, are there any, any items? Look, I'll ask you this way. Is there anything that's different for the next for the next meeting is there anything different from our current agenda aside from the minutes depends on when you form the subcommittee well the subcommittee would be it's still number eight yeah or yeah uh, actually yeah actually let's let's put that on as an item forming a subcommittee okay. if you want to so i think we should probably leave. see there's two options we could either Create a subcommittee, or we can just have a full committee vote. Not everyone shows up, but then that kind of looks bad because a lot of absences. Mm -hmm. Well, huh? can we just move now to create a developer subcommittee? No, because it's not on the topic of the agenda. Oh, um, I see. Although but it is related to voting but, system. But voting. the problem with forming a subcommittee was that would mean that that would even further limit our ability to talk with one another. Oh, because then you two can talk to each other because you can't sit a quorum of the subcommittee. Yeah, that's three, or even if it's four people, you still. So let's let's save that as a discussion for the next meeting. Okay, and then we can just debate the yeah. Um So I'll just, other than that, I'll just have all the same items again. And then I think Director Jarrell might, I think she might come. Okay. She said, she didn't, I didn't ask her to come for this meeting. She did. She was thinking about us, so. 
Okay, anything else? Okay, um, there's no members of the public, so there's no public comment. Um, well, great, then I'll adjourn the meeting. The time is now, is it kind of a rush? It's 8.38 p.m. It's 8.38 p.m. The meeting is adjourned.